this particular ape has crazy eyes. So that ape probably did so many illegal drugs at the yacht club that their eyes popped out of their head. GM or Franklin, uh, I mean, we know very little about you. Uh, let's say my audience, uh, we know that you have 37 bored apes. The counts keeps on going up and down. So like I have to keep up. I have to remember whenever I'm tweeting, oh, it's 38 today <laughs> uh, when I was starting the space. But like, you know, I would like to know uh, Franklin a little bit more apart from the NS- NFT space, uh, whatever you can Tell us about yourself. Who's who's Franklin? Okay, yeah, my name is Franklin. Um, I got an NFTs about a year ago in March for um, NBA Top Shot. And before then, I was in crypto about a year or so when um, we were all kind of locked down with COVID about two years ago. And I was trying to figure out ways to sort of find side hustles or just better investments. And I would buy Bitcoin and then spend it all on um, like esports or or, um, you know, sports betting, whatever sports is going on at the time. And um, by, I guess, the fall season, when Bitcoin was really taking off, um, I tried, you know, just trying to find other ways of maybe just possibly holding on to the Bitcoin instead of spending it all. And then um, then got into another type of market called prediction markets, which um, really peaked around the election day of 2020. I'm in the United States. So that's why I started the Twitter account. You can see my username. That I just you can see the day that started on it had nothing to do with NFTs. But um, as the end of the 2020 went on, I would follow more accounts related to crypto because um, it was a big deal at the time. You know, everything seemed to be going up. And by the start of 2021, you know, things are really peaking, especially with Bitcoin over you know near all time highs of you know sixty sixty five thousand uh, dollars. And same with CryptoPunks. I think CryptoPunks also reached that hybrid price. So it was pretty cool to see the NFT project, you know, equal one Bitcoin. Um, obviously at the time I couldn't afford to buy that, but when Top Shot came out, I decided to go in that direction and kind of move over from investing in crypto to NFTs because I really understood that really helped me understand what NFTs meant. So Top Shot, you have NBA basketball video highlights that are immortalized on the blockchain and that really meant a lot to me because it, you know you couldn't just right click some uh, a video of a highlight and um and make it your own it wouldn't be as valuable as what the company behind top shot was doing so it really taught me you know provenance and making you know and the uniqueness of owning a certain nft moment and having uh the you know the ability ability to own it or resell it to flip and make money or hold on to it um, long long term to give to your kids or grandkids. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make a lot of money at all. I, I, I don't think I made any positive flips in Top Shot because the market uh, really, really took a nosedive ever since, you know, a year ago. So there was pretty much no way for me to make any money. But I, I by being in the space, logging on Twitter all the time, following, um, you know, influencer accounts or you know, people who had a lot of knowledge about the space that that sent me down the NFT rabbit hole. Um, not as much time as I probably had spent later on, but you know, from March to May of 2021, I probably log on Twitter every day or two and see what um, you know these NFT crypto punk top shot accounts are talking about. What are the latest trends in cryptocurrency? And then I didn't really hear about Board Ape Yacht Club until the end of April right around the time they revealed their art. So they were still minting. They revealed their art. A lot of people that I followed from the Top Shot community changed their profile pictures to an ape. And I thought that was fascinating because I'd never seen such mass adaptation of profile pictures other than CryptoPunks. But because CryptoPunks is so expensive, it wasn't something that um, the average person could buy. But with the apes, it was probably $200, $300, uh, 0.08 ETH at the time to mint. So I thought it was pretty cool to see a lot of people sort of instantly change their profile picture identity from maybe a real picture of themselves to a um, cartoon picture. So that's that's pretty much all the story that I have before I really got hardcore into NFTs. And I minted three apes on my phone. I didn't have a 
computer that I could use for crypto. So my phone, I, I logged onto MetaMask and connected it to a web, minting website for the first time to mint. Um, then they eventually sold out that same night. So there was an insane amount of sales, secondary sales. And by the time I got back on the Twitter, I, I noticed, you know, figured out what OpenSea was, logged on my phone and just started buying the floor as much as I could. The floor price was about 0. 0.2, 0. 0.3 ETH. Um, after a dozen or so, I ended up buying my profile picture, which is gold for ape, because I, I, I started to look at different rarities of the apes and, and um, made the conclusion that the fur color was going to be the most po- rarest possible trait just because it, it you know it's easier to point out and easier to categorize than other traits, even though other traits could be less rare than the gold fur. Not that many are, but it's still, I thought, you know, that was enough. It was rare enough for me to buy it at four ETH, which is about 15 or 20 times the floor price of a current, of an ape, of an ape at the time. So it was really, a really big investment for me. At, and um, yeah, I made that my profile picture and the rest is, is history. I I, wow. I had 30 apes by the time I, by the end of the first day that they sold out because the floor price was still pretty low, it was 0.3, 0.4. So I spent pretty much all the <laughs> extra crypto money that I had possible laying around to um, buy the apes. Because, and, and another, another um, you know, I guess positive, well, and it turned out to be a positive thing about them was there weren't that many other projects to to invest in that were profile picture type like like we have now. Now you can get, you can buy the 10 different projects, new projects every month. So um, that, that sell out and that do well. So because we had a limited amount of options, apes were pretty much the, the king for me. And um, yeah, that, that's, that's how my story has gone. I've, I've kept probably no less than 25 ever since. And after some successful flips, um, you know, some wins and, and a lot of losses. I, I was finally able to get up to 37 as of now and pretty much maxed out. <laughs> wow, what what a what a crazy story and what an awesome journey. Uh, I just, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I wanted to ask you a lot of follow up questions, but you already answered them uh, in the question. But again, right? Like, I, I just want to ask you, uh, like, you know, it, it just within one day's. Ban, I think you ended up buying 25 of them and you also spent a ridiculous amount on buying this golden ape right like so like what 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 was that point when you knew that holy shit this project seems very interesting and like you know and you're not overextending like even if someone likes the project maybe they buy two they buy four you went on and like just bought a lot what was that point? Yeah, good question. Because, I mean, even now I notice, you know, new projects people buy 20, 20, 30, they'll go genie sweep, you know, a whole, a whole bunch of them at a time. And um, I guess that wasn't, I mean, even you know, back then people did mint, you know, Pranksy minted a thousand of these apes and gradually sold them all off. And then um, several people probably minted, you know, 70, 80, 90, 100 or bought up to that many. So when I had my 30 after the first day, there was probably about 30 other people that had that many, maybe 35. So I didn't feel like, you know, even, 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 even then, even, you know, type being a top 35 holder, I didn't think it was that high of a ranking because, um, I, I didn't really know where this space was going to go. I had just wanted to buy a lot because, um, I had saw what happened in top shot and how I was so late and I didn't want to be a situation where I would be too late for the apes. So I figured if I got in as early as possible, you know, I have a better chance of making money. And I wasn't really in it for the year long game, which I've had these for almost a year now. I was kind of in it for just a short flip. So I was like, okay, well, by the time other people even just wake up the next day and hear about apes, maybe they want to buy it for a bit more than what I paid for it. Um, I didn't really get understand that these were going to be a long-term play until probably the middle of the month of May when I started really digging deep into the utility and knowing that um, these apes give us the commercial full license and, and rights to the image. And so being on Twitter and following, you know, did the ape follow ape thing, I saw a lot of people that I follow, um, you know, continue to have their ape profile picture and figure out ways to... Um, not really to make money from them by commercial, having commercial rights, but just to just to market them and market the project. So they would have artists commission derivatives for them, and I thought all that was pretty cool. So um, by by the middle of May or so, I started you know coming to the conclusion that 
by having the full rights to the to the artwork that has essentially made me the artist of the art of the ape art and i could make it my business logo put it on merch and do whatever i want to with it have other artists use it um and their and their projects so as somebody with no art skills having that having this type of art in this space really meant a lot to me because it allowed me to be on par with um not 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 saying i am better or anything like that but it gave me the um ability to showcase you know my own art and i know everybody knows i didn't draw it but then everybody also knows that i own it and i'm the sole owner of the rights to it so i could now you know i could do stuff like post eventually post collages and slideshows of the art um and not you know people can't say hey, oh you copy this art or, or this art sucks like it's it's um it's something it's a very powerful feeling to have at least just for me in general it's just a personal thing because I, I don't, I, there's no way I'd be able to replicate art of this quality anytime, you know, in my life because I just don't have the skills. So just, just the art alone and having the rights to it was a big deal that made me keep holding on to it. And another thing was the roadmap. Um, I had never seen, I mean, I, it's the first project obviously I was in, but never saw anything like with, with roadmaps that board at Yacht Club have, they had seemed to have extensive roadmap. They kept promising more and more, you know, eventually gave us the um the dog airdrop but um or airdrop claim but even with the roadmap um just by connecting my wallet to meta uh, my metamask to the website that owned the ape and being able to draw on the bathroom wall the first night that they sold out made me part of the community because only the only people that could be in the bathroom wall was people who bought in and so it was almost like you were in the club already with you know a couple thousand other holders and doing a collaborative art project on bathroom wall which, you know, obviously is the lowest common denominator of art possible when you're late, you're super late at night. But if you think of um, the lore and the story behind the apes itself, that's probably what would have happened if you were there with the apes, you know, if if, some, for some, if you could immerse yourself in there. So I, I tried to buy into the story and immerse myself with the apes and look at the art and see, that, okay, you know, this, this particular ape has crazy eyes. So that ape probably did so many illegal drugs at the yacht club that their eyes popped out of their head. So I just always have different stories behind each a picture um, as like how they arrived at, you know, with the look that they have for the particular picture. And it's all sort of fun and games and memes and everything related to crypto and also possibly related to the type of lifestyles that people <laughs> with these ape characteristics um, have. So it, it was all pretty, pretty fun and, and pretty, you know, interesting for me at the time it uh, obviously it was easier for me to understand with no other nft project that i was interested in so so that all of that together you know i did a lot of you know i know i talked a lot but it, it just required me to do a lot of thinking and a lot of you know um research on this project and looking at different traits and things and i just really fell in love with it so i guess you know since i liked it so much i can talk about it so much but it also required me spending a lot of time to make sure that this was the right project. This podcast was possible because of our sponsors, Brave and Unstoppable Domains. More about them next. Crypto scams are like box of chocolates. You never know which one you're going to get. Especially if you're using a crypto wallet, which is a browser extension. You run the risk of attacks like phishing scams, account spoofing, data leaks, and theft. The best way to avoid getting attacked is using Brave Wallet. Brave Wallet is the first secure crypto wallet built directly into a browser, so no extensions required. With Brave Wallet, you can buy, store, send, and swap assets. You can even manage your portfolio and NFTs all in one place. Whether you're new to crypto or a seasoned pro, it's time to switch to Brave Wallet. Download Brave at brave.com slash web3 with D and click the wallet icon to get started. You know what's the worst part about crypto? These long and complex wallet addresses. They can get so confusing. I know, you hate them too. What if I told you I replaced my long wallet address with dhshah.nft? 
Yeah, that's my name. All thanks to Unstoppable Domains, they're the number one providers of NFT domains. With Unstoppable Domains, you don't have to worry about renewal fees because you get to keep your NFT domain forever. You can get an NFT domain as well, maybe a .crypto, .nft, .x or something else. Go to unstoppabledomains.com right now and get your NFTs for as low as $5. I mean, honestly, I didn't think, like, you know, people would think this deep about projects. But I'm so glad, like, you know, you found the community and you found, like, you know, the art and everything that attracted to, like, you know, to you towards Basie. It's a very interesting story. I would like to uh, just tell my first interaction with uh, Basie uh, was basically right. I was I was I was doing a podcast before this uh, uh, for a company I worked with, and I reached out to these guys because I I honestly thought that hey, holy shit, this is a very cool project, and I think the mint price uh, like, sorry the floor was around point one point two that time, and I said like you know guys uh, I would like to do a podcast with you, and they are like hey we are not taking any media request because we are busy working on our roadmap. And for a very long time, these guys didn't do any media interviews. So, I I mean, I should have known, right, like the, this this project, maybe I should buy. But anyway, Franklin, thanks for sharing that story. Guys, uh, again, just small request. Uh, if you're liking whatever you're hearing, go share, tag Franklin, tag me and let um, your friends and other people know like this is happening. Franklin, I also want to ask you some something you did, which I found really interesting. And I think that's how I got to know you. But correct me if I'm wrong, but you made a ape public, right? Like you uh, made a royalty free ape, which people could use uh, anytime. Uh, am I getting, am I right? Um. I, I didn't pers- particularly make any of my actual apes, you know, like the mm-hmm. actual NFT art, you know, for public use. But I definitely encourage if anybody wants to, you know, use it for anything, you know, either ask me or, you know, show it off or give me credit. But I did, I, I added some uh, McDonald's, I added the McDonald's logo to my gold ape and uh, numbered it and said that you could use that. So basically the same as my, <laughs> as my ape. <laughs> Just added a uh, fast food meme to it, so <laughs> that's out there. Um, I don't mean to show my own project. It's it's not even the. It's a bit, you know. It's I'm not. Say, I don't have any more to sell. So you'll be buying okay. somebody else for you know a few dollars. Um, <laughs> they're called the Nick Apes. So those the, that was a pretty fun experience, and I and um you know just showed me just the basic steps of how to mint on OpenSea. I'm not like I said. I'm not an artist, so that's the best I could do. I got I actually have. Um, Sarah Stargo, another artist who has her own project now, did, did the art for me, did the photo, you know, not really Photoshop, but just put the logos and numbers. And I, I put the numbers on them myself. So it was pretty, um, you know, low effort. I'm not, you know, th- then that and that and that is like just to go back to your point. All I could all I have to do is just say, hey, you know, you can use my ape as as, you know, if you want or put it in your artwork. And that's essentially me you know, doing doing all the work that an artist would have to make a new piece, except all I have to do is just, you know, say, hey, just use my ape that's already there. And by people using it, it's easy to recognize. People will know where it came from. Um, so it, it gives me sort of that sense of, um, you know, art, art history that I wouldn't have had in the past, you know, before now. Awesome. That's that's uh, good to know, uh, Franklin. I'm just gonna pin those uh, 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 NFTs you were talking about uh, in our chat. I just found them. Uh, fast food macapes. Very cool. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, is it okay if I do that, or should I remove it? Oh no, you put them on there. I mean, uh, <laughs> I there's no utility to them other than you just use them as a robot picture. I'm not yeah. guaranteeing any uh, flips or any income from that. <laughs> But they're real cheap. It's just fun. It's just uh, something fun I make. I'm not. I'm not the uh, the type of artist that could sell out a project. So this, I, 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 I know. I read the room. I know my space. I know my lane. And uh, <laughs> that was just that was just for fun. Maybe maybe McDonald's would actually look at it one day and, and use it themselves. Awesome. We're on a happy meal, that would be awesome to see. Okay, Franklin. What was your quick quick quickie? What was your first flip? Uh, first uh, flip which made you money if you remember um but definitely wasn't top shot sadly i wish i wish i could say that 
it's still, still, I'm still re- regretful that I missed out on that and mad that I lost a lot of money. So, I mean, I probably sold an ape, you know, it would, I was, it would have had to have been an ape. I, I probably bought it for a 0.15 and probably sold it for a 0.25 or 0.3. And that was, <laughs> you know, I did that maybe three or four times. Basically. So that was, that was pretty fun to do. After the apes, I got into the ghost project a lot. So I made a lot of insane flips there by um, buying in some of the meme projects in the, in the pain game uh, collection. That was probably my best work, um, you know, going all in on a certain lane of a project and it paying off for me or just even influence the market for other people to, to go all in as well. Wow. Um, but, but, but early on, you know, it had to be the apes because that was all I was invested in early. You have to check my um, OpenSea account and see which ape I sold first. I don't even know what that is because I've been, I went through so many that it's almost painful to go back and see, oh, I actually own this ape for 0.2 ETH. I, all I had to do was hold on to it instead of buying some other, you know, rug pull project that cost me <laughs> the same amount of money nowadays because it's had an ape. Uh, awesome. Okay, Franklin, I think we'll get on to... I, I, I just love hearing your story. And I think it's very important to understand who is behind, like, the tweets you see, the flips you see, because, uh, like, it gives a human touch to the entire persona. Uh, uh, Franklin, uh, let's say someone has joined the crypto space, NFT space uh, last month. And like, you know, they are looking to invest in NFTs. What would you say to them? That's a good question. I, I mean, I try to ask myself that constantly. And, and I'm um, just as a just just as a general um, thought that I have, if I if I'm at this point, if I'm making new follower getting new followers it's not they're not people who have been in the space you know for as long as they have they're not, they're they haven't been around for a year and, and have no idea who i am so it's it's more likely people who just joined the space maybe i was in there recommended or something or you know probably been around for a couple of months and maybe saw a tweet of mine so i i have to take that in consideration i'm not you know I'm not, all my followers aren't they used to be but not all ape owners who have been around since may so um I try to to at least be more realistic in sort of things I do. I'm not making like insane, you know, hundred thousand dollar investments at flips that nobody else can make. But um, um, I definitely want to make sh- show people that you know there here's a way to find a project that's really taking off, and maybe you can possibly get into it that is liquid enough that if you want to sell and hopefully make money from it, great. If um, it is always a risk that it go down in price. Hopefully, it doesn't go down. You know. And price too much is more of a stable pricing um, that you can get out. So I, my answer to for, for newcomers as to what new projects, what projects to get in, um, I don't have like a specific one. I know the last one I treated about was Dower Darcells, but now their floor price has hit 0.9 ETH. So that's like not a, that's not a project I would recommend newcomers to get in if they're at their all time highs and also that expensive. I would just stick to price, you know projects that are between you know 0.05 and 0.2 ETH so the best way to check that is um, a, a website I use a lot called IC.tools so I go to, so I can just do it right now if I go to IC.tools they do have a paid subscription format which I um, bought in early so I'm a paid subscriber but they should have other um, options public options so if you look at the top uh, NFTs and numbers of sales for the past week or so you can also sort those by um, floor price and so like uh, you can just scroll down a good a project with a uh, floor price under 0.2 i would say is um gutter sorry my dog's barking it's gutter juice so gutter juice is really liquid it's a huge collection of twenty eight thousand nfts so um you know if i was just obviously not financial advice gutter juice um dented feels so like th- those are two those are two, the Sunnies, those are a few collections that are, um, you know, lower in price where you don't, if, if the work, if worse comes to worse and it goes down all to zero, you only lose like 0.1 ETH. You don't lose, you know, thousands of dollars. So I feel like if I were brand new to the space um, and investing in a pattern that I was a year ago, if you, if you ignore what I do of Top Shop, but if all I was focusing on was making, you know, five or $10 in the flip or, or maybe, you know, 
luck, getting lucky and making a couple hundred dollars in a month or so, I would buy into the slower price projects. I wouldn't be as risky as I am now buying into projects with 0.5, 1, 2, 3, or even another ape. Um, I think if you were to buy into those expensive projects, you would have to just have a lot of money laying off on the side so that you, it won't be a disappointing experience if the floor price went down because that I know if I got in a different project other than apes and if I got into something today and the floor price went down, you know, 20, 30 percent a day, that would really just make me want to exit the space altogether. I, I'm, I'm really impatient. And um, if something like that happened, I would just step away and find something else to do. So that's why I'm really uh, I'm trying to be, you know, become as aware as possible as to who who are following me, who's paying attention to me, and that, you know, they probably are mostly new to the space and need, you know, need some guidance. Awesome. Thank you for uh, sharing that. Thank you for telling us about IC tools as well. And uh, like, you know, we I've pinned it. So if you want, you can check it out. And as Franklin said, nothing said here is financial advice. We're just giving examples, educating you about like, you know, what's happening, what are these techniques to be used and like, you know, what all you can do because that's something not uh, a lot of people talk about. People will talk about like, you know, hey, I flipped this, but how? no one ever tells you so that's what we are trying to figure out franklin uh, what's your uh, strategy to flip right like what's some strategies people can uh, keep in mind so uh, like w when they're flipping nfts so um i use the same website ic tools so if i want to buy a project i just look at what sales are, are just popping off in the past you know hour 30 minutes or um you know even half day 12 hours and you can you can sort of look they, they even give you a visual chart of like what what's selling at what price so if it's like a massive uptick in price you know there's probably going to be a drop off really really soon you're probably too late but if there's um if there's if there's a lot of sales and maybe not at massive uptick in price maybe it's still you still have potential um to at least monitor the floor price and flip it the unfortunately um and uh starting around probably late fall open changed where they required us to pay open 2.5 percent for every single sale we make whether it's a private sale or a public sale so back in the day uh, beforehand we could buy like an ape for example and i could flip it um, if i could find a buyer on open and pay no commission not even the 2.5% commission to board apes. So I could buy for like 0.4 ETH and sell to somebody for 0.42 ETH and make 0.02 ETH profit. If I, um, if I sell it privately to somebody because I didn't have to pay any, any commission fees. So those were the good old days where you could, you know, go in a discord, find a buyer and flip it to them privately. Nowadays you have to account for that 2% fee. So 2.5% um, fee and uh, it's 2% on looks rare. So you do the math, you add the collection fee, I mean, the um, website fee plus the collection fee, which could vary between, you know, as low as 2.5% 2, 2 to as high as 10% for different collections. So you have to keep that in mind when you buy into a project. So if you're buying into a project and the floor price is 4 ETH and the collection fee is 7.5% and the open fee is 2.5%, that means you have to pay 10% fee. If you buy four ETH worth of uh, that collection, you have to wait till the floor price hits 4.4 ETH just to be able to flip it at the same cost that you buy you bought it in at, and that's a huge jump um, for for any project going up that many ETH. If you're trying to lift a quick flip, you would have to, it would have to require either a very thin floor or you know a lot of people that are actively buying at that price, and it's hard to do. So um, it's it's a lot easier to stick to lower price nfts if you if you you know if if you're only worrying about flipping for you know a few dollars or so and that's what i do i just you know try to find lower price nfts and um <laughs> and just pray you know once you buy it just hope that somebody else eventually buys it from where you, you bought it for it it's that simple um but there are the tools that i use from like ic tools you can sort these charts i mean you can see yeah you can sort these charts by the floor price you can sort it by how many sales have happened in this period of time, which is their main criteria. And you can also, um, you know, click on it and get a visual of, of when exactly these sales are occurring at what prices. So you can actually visually, you know, visually see a peak or a, a valley 
or, or um, a, a pump or a dump in the floor price. Um, another good another good time to buy is right after a reveal of a project. The floor price drops a certain percentage. You can just look at you can just look at the people undercutting each other for the um, the non rare NFTs. It usually goes down below the um, unrevealed floor, and you can buy in at that point once once the floor starts rising back up and make some quick flips there. Um, I after I bought the gold fur ape, which was like the rarest ape trait. I, I stopped. I stopped trying to snipe rare traits for NFTs. That those could also be a possible way of flipping. If you you know find a discrepancy in floor price for a rare trait, you can buy it and then reprice it. Um, it's just a personal preference of mine because these websites I'm looking at just show me the floor price. So I've uh, I've been so married to the floor price, looking at how they change um, to see if I can flip things. And I, and I feel like f- selling a floor. NFT is a lot easier than selling your rare one. I have a lot of people in my DMs daily on on group on um, Discord asking to flip a rare mutant plus some ETH and other NFTs for a board ape, and I always have to tell them no because I, I don't see the value in the rare mutant that they see it, and I think it's a lot it's a lot harder to get a fair value for a rare NFT like a rare mutant that's you know 20, 30, 40 ETH. Because there's not just not that many people who want to spend that much for a rare mutant. So if I get stuck with it, that's just money that's like burning in my wallet that I that I won't be able to get back liquid because it's hard for me to find a buyer. And I feel like with a full on you know ape, it's a lot easier just to find and sell it for the full price. So that's just an example of you know being careful what you're buying. You know, it is it's always cool to have the nice shiniest NFT. I mean, I have a gold one. It's it's, it's definitely like you know very tempting to do it but just be careful that having those rare nfts are hard to flip so that's just my opinion a lot of people you know do do snipe traits i just stick to the floor i have a very um emotionless mindset to a lot of these collections i buy it knowing that um i'm probably going to try to get rid of it with the next day or two regardless of the floor price and just move on and try to find the next project that possibly could go 2x 3x or, or beyond so that's a lot of, I mean, that's a lot of long answer, but that's a lot of what goes into my mind when I try to buy into these projects. Um, there was a large dip in NFTs um, this week. So I felt it was a good time to sort of buy in a lot of dips and see if I could flip. And, and the fact that I was able to do some flips this week is a good sign that I think uh, we might be hitting a nice bull market coming up soon. You know, we'll see. You never know. Hey, there were, these these were some nice tips, uh, Franklin. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, like I, I do agree, right? Like because as the trades go rarer, as the price goes up, it becomes harder to flip, right? Like uh, so, if if there is no liquidity, you don't want to be get stuck with a rare. And uh, Franklin, I remember you. Uh, I I can't uh, recall was it funks or exp- expansion funks uh, uh, when you were repricing the floor continuously, right? Like you were buying these nfts and you're like hey like you know some stupid guy sold it for a cheaper price than it was supposed to do and next day you were just repricing it to like 2x 3x harder uh higher so w- was it like were you manually searching for these uh options of like you know popular traits or like you know were you again using some tools or like you know w- what what do you think about that strategy so that was a very fun night um and i think it was a very unique night in my f- funks journey i've been a funk since july you know bottom i minted over 100 150 of them at 0.01 eth floor price which i thought was very cheap at the time given the controversy so they were off of open sea for many months um on other marketplaces so it was hard you know it was hard to get the word out for people to buy and then once they came out with the new mark once uh some members of the community came out with the new marketplace um it was very user friendly and fun to use and you know there's just a lot of hype at the time so you, you know, there would be just a random Tuesday night in which um, the sales started flying. So you couldn't find this type of data on IC tools. You'd actually have to go either in Discord or Twitter or on the website, find the sales bot just to see what was going on. So there was so much volume that um, the website allowed me, the Not, Not Larve Labs website allowed me to easily filter out trades um, a lot quicker than OpenSea would filter out the trades, find the difference between the floor price and the next highest price. 
and just buy it and flip it. And due to um, very, very low royalty fees, I think it was 2.5% altogether at the time when it's now 0%. Uh, but it was, it was low royalty fees and no gas fees to, um, to delist or list. So it was very, it was very quick to just be able to, um, you know, buy it and then quickly list it or quickly delist and relist. You know, there's just, it was a lot easier and a lot faster to use. So it was just, you just have to be present for one of those unique nights where the sales are flying. I mean, I was, I was online late last night. The project I had a lot of, which I sold a lot out of was Dara Dar sales, you know, their floor prices. Um, now I think 0.9, uh, 0.945 ETH and it was point this time yesterday it was probably like point five. It was very it was very, very uh you know it pretty much doubled, you know, or it was actually point four. So probably it more than doubled since since yesterday. And if you just look at the number of sales, they are going so fast that you you could just buy one and then relist, like I said, it was ten percent commission for this project. You just buy one and relist, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 percent or even 20 percent higher and somebody will eventually buy it because the floor prices went up, you know, you did buy it from the day. Um, but that but because I looked at that that example as the entire collection, you know, you just have to wait for the floor price to hit with the funks. It was just easier um, because people are so familiar with the crypto pump traits in general. It was just easier for me to say, OK, hey, here's a 3D glasses. I'll just buy it and then repress the next 3D glasses, as opposed to if you get involved with other collections, you're not going to remember which traits are the most popular, which traits pop out the most. So I, it was just a unique situation where it was a collection where I was very familiar with the traits and a lot of the NFT community was. And also the user interface you know, worked out where it was a lot easier to see um, the spread and the floor price between the cheapest and the next cheapest um, NFT. So that so that's that was a fun night. It was a great you know flip. I've I've lost more money than that you know in other projects. So you know it all evens out or, or even worse. But um, I you know that that takes a lot of skills and just being in the right place at the right time just to know and 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 take the risk to to buy something and flip it at a higher price instantly. Um, you know just have to find the right project, something that's good with uh, the commission fees as well. So you don't have to reprice it way too much higher. Awesome. Uh, Franklin, I just want to discuss a little bit about portfolio of, of your portfolio if you are open for it. So you have uh, 37 board apes. What else do you have? You have 60 book games, which is just insane, right? Like you probably bought, I don't know how many books you might have bought and people might have thought you are crazy. But like, just tell me what are like, you know, big chunk of your portfolio. So like, you know, our listeners would know. Oh, so I'm down to five book games. I sold most Ooh. of them. Uh, I mean, I somebody had told me about what was going on. I hadn't really paid much attention because they were all airdropped to me. So I bought 720 books, donated pretty much all of them to Goodwill, mm -hmm. and I got the airdrop. And just, you know, since it, was an, since it was another blockchain, I just left it alone. And the floor price was like half of what it is now. And so once that floor price went up, I was like, okay, let me just go ahead and get rid of them and get this money back. And, um, you know, at least doubled the I got double the amount, maybe even more of what I paid for the books. So I felt it was a good investment. And it was money that I paid, you know, paid for the books outside of Ethereum. I paid, you know, using credit card. So the fact that I was getting the money back in ETH for more than what I paid for the credit card, you know, it's almost like a stimulus package for me. So um, I used that stimulus money to get into Dara Dara sales in nice, nice double, like 10 or so ETH flip, <laughs> even at half of the floor price it is now. So I could have made more money, but, you know, just have to move on and, um, you know, hope hope the amount that I have now can carry me later if the floor price keeps going up. Um, so the uh, the actual still that stimulus package I put into the um, my latest big, big play, which is the gutter cat gang, um, uh, those mutant vial serum type thing, the gutter juices. So the I bought 45. Um, cat juices for 32 ETH. So a lot higher than the current floor price of like 0.6 ETH. But, um, you know, it's one of those, I, I had a lot of conviction in it yesterday, not too sure about it now, but it's, I still have a week or so before they become revealed. So if I really want to get out, um, it's, like I said, it's money I can afford to lose. Maybe I can sell at a 10, 15% loss 
and just move on from there because I made money in the Dower Dark Souls project that can make up for it. So I always try to like make sure that if I lose money somewhere, some somewhere I have it covered somewhere else. So hopefully things even out. I was able to flip a um, not flip but trade a for twenty five ETH last night. So that was another stimulus package. The 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 largest investment I have ever made ETH wise was in CyberKong's Genesis. So I had six of those after I flipped all my funks. And then I moved over to the Creeps project um, because I thought they had better tokenomics in terms of passive yielding. Um, so I bought the very, very top of the Creeps market. Everything's down by like 80%. So it's it's a, it's it's sort of sad to see. But, um, you know, it's one of those, you know, I can't win everything in NFTs. At least I know what it feels like to be in a project that you buy high and it just goes down super low. So I bought probably like three or four apes worth um, when the floor price is like 100 ETH at a time. So I spent, you know, probably 300, 400 ETH on that project altogether. I mean, I, you know, it's still giving me nice yield daily. Um, and I've been able to sell a little bit, not not really much flipping, but just sell to get some more liquid. And that project is the fastest road I've ever seen. It seems like there's new updates every week, which may may spook some users because if there's no updates in one day, <laughs> they get nervous. Um, but it's, it's, it's a very fun community and, and I like being a part of it. And... Um, I thought it would be like a precursor to what Ape Token with Board of Yacht Club would be like if they ever, you know, release some sort of passive yielding tokenomics. So I, I felt I could diversify spending three or four Apes worth over in this project to get passive yielding, even though I, I just had the wrong timing for it. Um, and then have the, instead of maxing out all my ETH on all Apes and just solely relying on Ape Token yielding, because, you know, there's no guarantee that a token for a token price would go up in value if people were just yielding it and selling it. So um, my biggest bags are the apes and the creeps and then now the gutter cat uh, juice um, for the cats. And so I, I pretty much really consolidate consolidated to at least those top two projects. I just want to make sure that I'm in blue chips and that even in a down market, it's, it's still a liquid enough market for me to get out of if I really need some money. Hey, uh, so sorry, Franklin. I missed the part. Uh, what are your bags right now? What have you consolidated consolidated it to? So, got the juices, uh, board apes. Uh, and the, yeah, that was pretty much the only three. Um, and, and what else? And the creeps project, cold blooded creeps. Cold blooded creeps. All right, yeah. uh, Franklin. I was just seeing your uh, tweets yesterday. You were fighting with someone because uh, they they were like, uh, "Hey, man, like you know, you spent like." a few hours and just made 0.2 ETH while trading and flipping and you were quite happy with it but people are saying like you know why are you you have like so much money already why are you just like you know flipping for 0.2 ETH or something like that so c- can you tell us what happened and like you know what's your side of it that's a uh, that's a good question um I think when I got into the uh hold on let me close the door because it's raining well when I got into the space you know, these were the type of flips that I would be aiming for. Um, just, you know, just that's just my habits of investing money. And that's probably why I didn't do too well before NFTs, because I would buy things or I'd buy, I would buy like Bitcoin and then constantly check the price of Bitcoin, you know, every 10 minutes to see if I could sell it at a flip. And um, because I would all just get so nervous that in one day it would crash or something. So I think I just carried that mindset over into the NFT space. Even when I bought the apes, I was still looking to flip them for small profits and just um, never, it never really worked out. <laughs> so I eventually just kept holding on to them. But um, yeah, I still just have that mindset where, you know, if I could get five or ten dollars or or more on a project, you know, that's a win for me, and I just move on, and um, hopefully it adds up. But then, but then, you know, an unint- unintended effect of me having a large following is that. Hopefully, I could show other people that, um, you know, there's still room to make these sort of small flips and NFTs. And I have to do it in an ethical manner. So I don't want to buy into the project, then tweet about it, and then flip it. Because I think um, that would be like me using my followers as exit liquidity. And I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, more as ethical as possible with my trades and my following. Um, Maybe when I had, you know, two or three thousand followers or even less, it was it was a lot easier for me to buy stuff and sort of tweet about it, and um, then hopefully flip it for a profit. But 
now a large following is hard to do. So just then, so that pretty much is why I do the small flips. One, because I'm so used to it just in my entire investing life. And then also just to show people who might not, you know, either are too scared or, or not wanting to get into the space that here's pretty much how you can do it. Um, and then, you know, obviously I mentioned how to do it, just making sure that you, you pay attention to the fees and gas that you pay. Because if you can, um, you can easily, like if you buy a project for, you know, point, OpenSea has, has improved their gas fees, but, you know, a month or two or three months ago, you have you would buy a project for like 0.02 ETH and then pay like 0.03 ETH in gas. And so it would be impossible to flip that unless the project, you know, went up by 300 or 400%. And so um, no, nowadays it's a little, bit, a little bit easier to do, but it's just one thing to keep in mind when you're flipping. So hopefully I have those like numbers ready to flip when people see, okay, it's after fees and after gas. So it's just more of like a... Um, educational standpoint where that you have to you have to take those in consideration now obviously there's a tax implication too um but if you're strategic about how you move your money around you can just claim a lot of losses which i which i did on an ape so you know if you add the losses if you if you already start out with the huge loss which not everybody can do you can sort of build up some flips and not have to worry about taxes on it And, and for me you know that's obviously not something i'm worried about if i'm here just to make sure i can educate and show people how to do it and then there is you know there are people asking me you know and, and you know, it just seems like um <laughs> this is just my personal opinion but it's almost like they there's a reason to criticize me for anything that i do you know for for whatever reason so if i say that i have a bunch of apes then i get criticized for you know being to max, max, you know, have, have, have too much exposure to one project and not diversify. But then if I make a small flip, you know, for a few, for a few bucks, then, it, then it's like, okay, well, you know, I have, I'm so rich in apes that I don't need to talk about these flips. So it's almost like I'm too rich and too poor at the same time. So I always thought that was fascinating for um, having criticism from, you know, <laughs> from, for different reasons. I thought that was pretty interesting and um, it's not going to, you know, change how I approach the space. Um, and then there's also people like, okay, why do you have a, a job? Like, for example, you know, this is like my lunch break during work. So hopefully, you know, I try not to tweet all day or, or just, you know, be distracted all day during the day and just focus on my stuff after hours. Um, you know, that for that is just, you know, making sure I'm, just having some sort of steady income because I didn't, I, I as bullish as I am on NFTs, I want to make sure that I have a um, strategy or just something in place for me if things were to go south. So that's pretty much um, why I still have a job in, um, and also can do NFTs. So I just was able to su- succeed early on last year that I don't have to spend that much time on NFTs now. So it's a definitely different situation than, say, somebody who's coming in fresh or somebody who is making a lot of money, you know, passively through NFTs that maybe they don't have to work a job anymore. So it's just um, I just want to make sure I have my feet in all sort of waters. I, I, and that's exactly what I love about you, Franklin, that, uh, like, you know, you are very ethical when it comes to things like you're not I, I've seen it, right? Like you're not using your followers as exit liquidity but you're actually journaling your journey right like hey guys i did this hey guys i did this hey guys so it's it's a learning experience as well for people guys if you have any questions uh, we'll take some questions uh, do send in the request and please uh, no shilling your project where your franklin uh, i we, we never know when we'll get another time to talk to him so please ask uh, direct questions and uh, yeah and if you guys are enjoying this space, uh, please, uh, like, you know, retweet this or uh, tell people, like, you know, this is happening. Tag Franklin, tag me and let us know. And, uh, yep, I'm adding you guys as speaker. And do ask your questions. Hello. Hey, hey. Uh, I was hearing Franklin talking about investments well, there's like uh, the craziest project, DCB World, a 1 million tickets lottery 
made by Evan Lutra and um, Romero Brito, the biggest NFT licensed artist in the world, and it's gonna kill the space. Franklin, I just sent you a message. You're gonna thank me later. When the 1 million tickets are gone, the prices will go up. You've been a total complete sport for the game. You gave away all your good advice to everybody. And I sent you a DM. It, it's going to change your life. DJ Khaled is in it. Steve Aoki is in it. Hey, it, buddy. Yes. Buddy, buddy, buddy. Is that a question? Um, I was wondering, how does Franklin in this... In this uh, money-making business of nfts keeps up a straight mind when he he bought like apes and he see them going up and then s slowly going down like the project he just talked about because awesome because it's not it's not easy to keep a clear mind in all in in this whole space oh yeah good question um yeah especially with the creeps i would i would buy um some of their assets that like you know over one ETH that are now you know point point two or point one five ETH now so it's like if I spent 200 300 more or more ETH I'll say 400 ETH on this project and I could only get you know 50 to 100 ETH out of it that's a pretty big loss I I you know that's that's an astronomically large loss for anybody you know in general I just keep a straight head on that um, yeah, it would be nice to have cashed out the money instead, of course. I just keep a straight head because I just came in at a different time in the space. So me buying my 30 or so apes at the beginning for 0.3 ETH, that was kind of like my barometer of how much my net worth is. Um, so if I just measure my net worth and how many apes I have, you know, even even when I had, when even when I could afford, you know, to buy those 30 apes back then, I always knew, okay, if something happened to me, you know, other projects, or if I really, really needed liquid, you know, regardless of the floor price of the apes, I would be happy selling them off at a profit. And so, um, even at, even, you know, I, I did sell a couple of apes at, you know, over 120, 140 ETH and bought in, you know, at lower prices and then, you know, check the difference right into creeps. And then of course, both projects start going down. So it's, it's that, you know, those weren't the best moves for me, but at least, um, I just have a different mindset because, you know, at any given time I could sell one ape and get, you know, 150 or more thousand dollars. And I, I always thought that was a, you know, that's a nice buffer to have. And it's, you know, it makes me very privileged in the space. I just was not expecting to have that situation, but even if the ape floor was say, you know, five thousand dollars instead I, I wouldn't have even had the funds to go spend that much money on another project and so if that project i would have had kept my spending relative to you know how much money i had so if the, even if another project went down by 80 percent, i would still know that oh i could have like five thousand dollars here for an ape to sell so just my spending and budgeting has been on a lot larger scale lately because of the price of the apes so it's one of those questions where um i would have a totally different answer if if the ape prices were different, I would have told the smaller investment thing. Um, but but the feeling is definitely the same. Like it's it, once you see prices go down 30, 40 percent, it really makes you question like are NFTs are NFTs really worth it here, you know, being so volatile that things can turn on a dime. I just um I just still think we're we're early enough that you could find opportunities for prices or for projects that if you want to make money that could go up, you know, 20, 30, 40 percent within a matter of days still. And there will always be those chances, um, especially during this stage. So that's what keeps me going and, and helps me hunt for new flips. Um, obviously, you know, that can always change. But um, that's another that's another sort of um, talking point I wanted to get into. Just making sure that you're not emotionally, emotionally attached to your bags too much because – if you see a if you see a project that goes down, you know, 40, 50, 60 percent, yeah, it's a cheap price for other people to get into. But you may want to, you know, put your eyes on another project that possibly could have a better growth potential that probably could double faster than this project that's seems to be going straight down. Like for example, um, even with like just look at the top tier projects. Look at um Mutant Apes, for example, do you think the Mutant Ape floor would double 
or do you think maybe like a quirky score would double? Which one would double fast? Would you would you spend, you know, 17 ETH for a mutant ape if you want to make, you know, that much more money back? Or would you spend, you know, seven or eight, nine ETH on a quirky's project that has, you know, a lot of momentum, a lot of potential? You could probably get the same gains, but invest a very small percentage of your money into the cheaper project. Or if you invest the same amount of money, then you could have that that's the type of investments that could take your net worth to the stratosphere. And so me putting in, you know, 20 or so ETH apes at the beginning, you know, look how that turned out. If, you know, even if I just had bought one ape, look how that turned out. So it's definitely like uh, making sure that you, you buy the projects that you, you see have the most potential at the time you buy it. And even if you, you're feeling down about it, if the price is going down, just keep, keep your same strategy is, is, is buying that project at this price, the best use of your money. And if it's not, then you should sell it and move on. So um, hopefully that answers your question about, you know, seeing seeing a particular project price go down. Obviously, if the market goes down in general, then that's pretty bad for all of us. But if the particular project's not doing well, um, that doesn't mean every other project isn't as well. So keep your eyes open and find find these other new projects. Wow, that's a lovely perspective, Franklin. I, I, I'm, we are going to clip all of this, make shorter audios, clip forms and share it because uh, the knowledge coming out of uh, Franklin is just amazing. Mo, you've been here since the time we started. You've been requesting. So I would ask you to go first. Hey, uh, hey Franklin. Hey, how do I say your name? D? D. Yeah, you can call me D. D. Um, so yeah, um, Franklin, I find your... Uh, outlook on life pretty pretty amazing in one way you're too rich to do anything in another way you're too poor to do anything right so you're stuck in some sort of uh, limbo state which I love too I, I like the fact that um, you're playing around with gutter juice uh, me too it seems like uh, like it is uh, again like um, I'm using this uh, software called Parsec, and I can visualize where the floor price is going right by trade. And uh, just wanted to comment on the fact that, like, every single day there's an opportunity for a quick flip, right? And um, just being at the the, the the hot contract for the day is sometimes, or hot contract for the week is sometimes just worth it, right? Um, because if you can be there at the same time and just, like, watch it, just have just be alert be vigilant when it comes to where you think it's it's a good point then you can obviously like take the action right and again no emotion just it is what it is and just go in and out as 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 there is liquidity right just go into safe projects and i think that's the best for beginners right like if there's enough liquidity that there's like a sale every two three minutes five minutes or whatever um, or like several a minute or several in five minutes, then people can, they're not taking the risk if they're just buying the floor and, you know, um, and they don't feel comfortable holding it for a long period of time. Yeah, good point. And I, and I, I've said this in other spaces, so I'll say it, say it here. Um, I don't know if it, it means anything to anybody, but to me it does. If you buy NFT, it's different than like buying a burger from McDonald's. If you buy a burger from McDonald's, you have to eat it. And that burger is now worth zero. So basically, you spent all the, you spent all the money you could afford to lose for that for that food because you know, I mean, you you have to you know use it up. You're not going to be able to get any money back from it. It's not an investment. But at least when you buy NFT, yeah, we we say it could go to zero. But like if it if it's if it's struggling and you want to get out of it, then get out of it. At least you can get like a partial refund at this. That's one of the <laughs> that's at least the good thing about NFTs compared to I mean, even if you go to like um, if you just buy art. And have or, or or have art installed in the house or, or or buy it at a show. It's pretty it's pretty hard to just return that piece of artwork and get your money back. At least you know with this digital world, you have an option. So take advantage of it. If you think there's better use of your money somewhere else, you don't you don't have to be. Um, I mean, I'm trying not to do this myself, but obviously I have huge bags. So I'm not, I'm not expecting to pump anytime soon in these projects that I'm in. But you know, people buy stuff and and flaunt their project you know, flaunt their buy and flex all the time, you know, that I, I definitely recommend doing that. That's more research for me to see what people are buying and, um, you know, do what you can to help pump your bags. If, if for some reason it's not working out, then, then, you know, hopefully you'll find another project that somebody else is pumping that you can get into. And, um, like you said, 
you know, you can, you know, within a matter of hours, you can make some good money here. Um, and that is, I didn't want that fact, fact to be lost because if somebody says, oh, you know what, Franklin, you, you have this many millions of dollars. Why are you only flipping for 0.2 ETH? Well, this time last year, I didn't have, you know, 0.2 ETH in NFTs at all. So if I flipped and made that much money, that would have been like a huge deal for me. Or even, you know, even like I said, I didn't make no money in Top Shot. If I can make $300 or $400 and I'm flipping Top Shot moments, that would have made my whole year. I probably wouldn't even never gotten into other investments if I made flips like that. So I try to make, I try to, you know, put things in perspective and like, you know, not just look at, oh, it's only 0.2 ETH. Um, you know, that's still a lot of money for, for me. And, you know, everyday lives, that's a lot of money for, you know, you get, you can get a nice uh, shopping trip at the mall or a nice meal for that. So I, I don't, um, that, that fact isn't lost on me still. That's awesome. Uh, frankly, I just love hearing you, man. Um, I, I'm, I'm so glad you did this. Uh, Anuj, we'll quickly take questions. Anuj, uh, you go next, please. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, it's, like, I'm loving it to what Franklin is saying. And, uh, like, great. Like, uh, you are, uh, like, juggling through all these uh, digital assets. And you are, like, I think you have mastered the, these virtual assets. And holding uh, 37 board apps is great. So my question is uh, very simple and uh, very straightforward. Uh, you are, like into uh nfts right and if you see like uh real assets not virtual asset real asset getting listed as an nft like in few places uh like uh i see that uh nfts are getting minted that have some sort of a real asset essence or a real asset uh per se so do you see that in future uh as a as an nft collector will you be holding a real asset as an nft would you love to like as an uh, nft collector and what do you see the future of uh, uh, NFTs into real asset world? So, I, I know I would just like use the term physical asset instead of real asset because yeah, yeah, physical uh, asset you yeah. can say yeah, physical asset. These so, assets are as real as it gets. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I'm just using the virtual and real, and again, cool. Uh, cool. Uh, again, you can say that okay, f- uh, physical asset yeah would be the appropriate. I would say awesome. Thank you, Franklin. Would you like to answer that? Yeah, good question. Um, so for uh, physical assets, just like the example I mentioned with the uh, with the hamburger, you know, just as if it's something physical, hopefully it's still something that you can still trade in, as simple as you could with the NFT. Like I can sell. I live in uh, Florida. I can sell NFT to a friend in Japan, you know, and it and it takes the same amount of time as me selling it to somebody who lives next door to me. And that's pretty amazing. Same amount of fees as well. You can't really do that with physical art, like I buy or phys- any any sort of physical NFT. Um, so while, uh, you know, just, I'll just start that, that point, like, like say for example, the, the, the physical utility of an NFT is a car. Well, I can't get the car to my friend in Japan in a matter of seconds, even if that person wants to buy my car. Um, you know, so that there's a lot of logistics involved with moving physical assets from place to place. And which is why I think people are, are warming up to NFTs. But to answer your question, I, I do think there is a, they're going to, there's going to be a huge, 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 um, monstrous influx of physical utility for NFTs. So maybe you buy NFT and maybe that gives you access to like something physical. So with the apes, we had ape fest in New York city where we had a yacht party and we also had a concert, um, party warehouse party. And we're going to also have ape fest in June, which I'm assuming is going to be a lot, you know, a lot larger scale than what it was back in November and in New York. So they're also building an in, in real life um, club in Miami. I don't know when it's going to happen, but that's an example of having that, um, you know, the club is not the NFT, but by owning the NFT that gives you access to like the physical utility of, of meeting new people and networking, um, you know, me living in the same state. If I go to the club a lot, you know, maybe, maybe I'm there so often that the, the um, bartenders know what my favorite drink is. And they'd be like, Hey, Franklin, you know, let me get you this drink. And, you know, there's a lot of like cool things to be, um, to, 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 to use with that physical utility that will, you know, could improve your life and improve your network and improve the people that you hang around with, um, just by having the NFT. So, you know, me buying a 200, $300 board ape, you know, could lead to me being, you know, at the, at their physical club or at events all the time to where, you know, I'm well known in the community. And so that is, that is, um, 
a, definitely a great use case for having physical utility for your NFTs. And then also big brands are coming in like Adidas. As you can see, Adidas will probably have merchandise drops tied to NFT ownership. Um, so that is going to be huge um, going forward with other companies coming in. And then just whatever companies, whatever they're selling as their product, they could always just convert to NFTs. I know, um, I, I feel like the music industry has great potential if artists become more independent and start, you know, interacting with their uh, followers through NFTs where they can give them physical utilities such as, you know, concert tickets or meet and greets. So there's definitely, like, we're still really early for physical utilities and NFTs. And also, you know, people even are selling <clears throat> their own houses as NFTs. It's a lot easier to buy the um, the house through an NFT. As you know, Obviously, as long as you can move into the house, of course, or even just own it and, and, you know, not even live in it. But it's your house, you're able to buy it quickly without having to physically move. Awesome. That's a great answer. And that was a great question. Thank you for asking that, Anuj. I'll take uh, Amar uh, next. And Coach Law, Namita, if you have any questions, uh, please raise your hand up. I'll get you up uh, next. Amar, go for it. Yeah, audible. Yeah. Uh, hey, Franklin. Thank you so much for doing this. And thank you so much for uh, doing this, Dheeraj. I have, uh, I'll give a quick intro and I'll give two questions. Uh, where I'm a founder of wall.app where we are building uh, social discovery around NFTs. So my first question is, uh, where do, where do you think people will flock to once the NFT winter sets in, uh, with respect to people and projects, like what are projects going to do, uh, and what are people going to do? That's the first question. The second is. Uh, do you find uh, activity that people are doing on a blockchain? Obviously, it's permanent, but do you find that to be relevant in the coming future? Like, do you find people being able to take insights, being able to relate to one another uh, as such as people in the coming future? Yep. Thank you. So your first question, what was that again about like projects and people? Yeah. So when the NFT winter sets in, like what is going to happen to the ecosystem? Oh, when there are yeah okay um so yeah i i mean I've, i feel like we've been through several of these winter periods and you know it's almost the same pattern happens where you know people uh things become a lot less liquid people become a lot less negative about i mean a lot more negative about their um particular even their own nfts i i just think we're still early enough in the in the um in the space where an nft winter is still going to be relatively minor compared to what's going to be you know and you know what the use cases and amount of adapt adaptation that's going to take with nfts going forward so i'm not worried about like you know huge drop-offs because i just think of you know if we're if all of us are here you know within the first few years of nfts it's almost like being around in the first few years of any sort of new technology there's always going to be bumps in the road um but don't we all wish we could have been at Apple within the first three or four years? Don't we all wish we could have been at, you know, Tesla or Google within the first three or four years or even Facebook? So um, even even during their worst times, you can see that, you know, the technology and the, you know, I guess Web2 back then has re you know, really grew and really took over tech, you know, technology in the world. So I, I just think that Web3, we're going to be next, you know, it's we i don't think web3 has peaked and that's that's pretty much my main answer you know we i don't you know we're so far away from the peak of web3 that these winters aren't really that you know that concerning to me obviously you know if if board a price goes down to you know 15 or 20 thousand dollars per ape that would be a huge you know upsetting loss for me i'll keep my eye on the market and to make sure that i handle it as best as i can but um i i still think we're still early enough to sustain a lot of what's going on now um that's not advice or anything just you know my general outlook and then your um and i forgot your second question already yeah i was asking uh we are we are all leaving footprints on the ethereum blockchain uh buying mm -hmm. nfts selling nfts being able to do trades do you think that is going to be relevant in the coming future yeah i mean i i i all i have and i don't have that much skills with the blockchain but i just check either scan if i want to see stuff but um, like the website I mentioned earlier, IC tools, they do a good job of checking the blockchain, seeing, you know, what's going, you know, they, they have a good knack of everything that's going on in the NFT blockchain currently, and it's in real time. So 
um, the fact that we're able to get that information, e even though you say it's permanent, you know, I, I, I just tend to look at, you know, the most recent information as, as um, an indicator of whether I should invest in it. But just in general, in the blockchain, you know, everything's going to be there um, for people to do research on. And, it, and we're going to eventually have more websites, more tools to analyze people's activities. Um, I just wish that there was a way, an easier way for us to get our transactions into like a tax software so we could figure out how much we're paying in taxes. It seems like there's still a lot of manual work that we have to do for that. So in the coming years, maybe there will be a, a leader in, um, in the tax software business that would also require them to know how to get that information from the blockchain that's you know permanent and use it to their advantage. Um, you know, eventually if we, if people start getting in tax trouble, um, like the, the agencies will, will know, you know, how in the, and then you have to ask yourself, how do these agencies know that you're, you know, doing your, your, um, skirting around certain taxes? Well, then it's because they probably have the technology to analyze your blockchain activity that maybe you don't know about. So hopefully if they do have that technology, you know, it'd be something that can be also used by the masses. So I'm, I'm still, you know, encouraged by what we have on the blockchain and hope that, you know, more people will use it more and give us more tools to, to look at things. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you for that product feature idea as well. <laughs> awesome. That helped Amar. Uh, we'll go with codes law next, who also says code is not law. What's your question, buddy? Hey, um, I was asking about uh, tax write-offs as well. Uh, you'd mentioned pushing losses into, um, you know, kind of tax harvesting, tax loss harvesting. And I, you know, maybe not intentionally, but um, for those of us that have lost money to hacks, I guess that's also a pretty good strategy. So, yeah, I was just interested in those tools that you're using as well. Oh, yeah, it was just, uh, yeah, I didn't mean to sell that a huge loss, but since I did, it's, you know, it's just, you know, that that's if I, journal that particular asset as a you know, loss, then if I add up on my gains, I don't, you know, it, I'm not that confident in my trading ability where I can make that much money up even in a year through through flipping. I mean, it's definitely possible. If I did, that'd be great. And the whole point of, um, you know, I, I'm not worried about paying taxes on income because it's, it's money that I wouldn't have otherwise made. So if I, whether or not it's 100% of that money or 60% of the money that I keep, it's still income like i'm not you know I'm not trying to you know hopefully you know hopefully still income obviously if the price of ethereum just went you know up or down that could obviously change things as well but yeah for um so i don't i'm not like a tax professional or anything as far as how to write off if you if you lost something but um you know it being on the blockchain if it gets sent away to another person's wallet at least you can prove that it got stolen in that fashion i mean there's no way and you can't really, I mean, there's no other further proof that's needed. You just say, I don't own that wallet and just write it off. You, you, you just have to make sure you put an appropriate market value of the amount of dollars that you lost. Awesome. Thank you for that uh, answer. And thank you for the question, Codes Law. Uh, I will go with Namita. Uh, you've been here for a long time. Go for it. Hey, hi. Hi, Neeraj. Hi, Franklin. It's really lovely to hear both of you. You sound very humble and balanced about all the things that you're doing. Um, before I ask the question, I just wanted to share one opinion Opinion about somebody asked about physical NFTs. Uh, today itself, I was thinking that why nobody is like minting um, bags, bag designs, generative bag designs as NFTs. Like That's like such a similar behavior. Um, I think the... Um, uh, the problem or the challenge is, is of distribution, but I still see it happening in future. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, how do you approach like utility-based uh, projects? Are you in any of the projects because of the utility? And like, what is the timeline that you look into for staying in a utility-based project? Yeah, good question. So with the apes, I just noticed that the utility was going to be very, very, very long-term. Even with this ape, ape token they announced in October, they said it was coming in first quarter of 2022 so we just pretty much as communities had to wait and you know sit on our hands for four or five months knowing that it was coming but then also knowing that there probably wasn't going to be much utility to the apes otherwise so um it's it's, it's always i guess it just depends on the project because like a project like even crypto punks have no utility 
they still are pretty liquid. You can, um, you know, there's plenty of for sale that you can buy. They're obviously very expensive, but you, you know, they're not going to go to zero anytime soon, despite them having zero utility at all. Um, so people, there's definitely, you know, uses for NFTs other than utility. Maybe they just like the art or it's a nice profile picture flex. Different projects have different timelines. I think you you um you can't just say oh it has utility so I buy it. You have to make sure that they deliver on utility because if they don't, they do. If they break a promise, then that's um bad for the project. People will start selling out, and that would hurt your investments. So you just have to be careful of what you um what you buy into, and you know if you know, make sure utility is realistic, you know, not not over promising. Um, obviously, the best the best utility is just something that they actually, you know, give to you or something that's innovative. So if you find a project that has utility that you haven't seen before, which is what I did with the apes, you know, there's plenty of utility that hadn't been done before, but it's been imitated, you know, thousands of times since, then that's a good, that should be a good investment. Um, and then obviously I think people still like the real life utility. So if, if you, you know, have the means to travel and meet up with fellow holders, that's a, a good, um, you know, that's just a good, nice way to connect with, the community and and grow it organically just you know ha- having real people that you know um or are friends with involved in the project so for timelines you know for the apes i, I feel like you know because they've announced that they're going to give us so much utility i never wanted to exit so early and miss out on it um for other projects it just depends on the project and what they're promising if they're um if they have no promises and just about the art then i have a really short timeline for that because people may be using those projects to flip into projects with utility. So I don't want to be left holding bags of utility, utility less art. For example, the toads project went from, went to like 13 E floor with no utility at all. It was just people, you know, just massive pumps, but then, you know, people started selling off their project because I'm sure they want to put their money elsewhere in projects with utility now that they've, made successful flipping and so it's very unlikely that that project will go up that high anytime soon because there's no utility there's you know for some new buyer to the space why would they buy that versus an nft that you know gives them something back in return so those are just things that i um have been able to see in the space as far as you know at least for one or two month time frame if, if there's little utility to the project it sometimes gets lost in the weeds so you just have to make sure that the project's delivering and you know very popular, but also you know not over promising. Awesome, awesome. Hey. That's Thank one you. second, one, buddy, buddy, crypto danda. I will, I'll get back to you. Just raise your hand uh, because there are a lot of people waiting on the in the line. Okay, thank you. And guys, if you're enjoying, uh, reshare. Uh, tag Franklin, tag me. Thank you for putting the hand up. Bam, I see you. I will uh, get back to you. I think uh, I will go with my name is Chioff, if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, yeah, you can ask your question, buddy. Yep, yep, it's pronounced Jeff. But uh, Jeff, yes, go question for Question here for you, Franklin. When getting into this, I'm looking at these projects as like long-term utility. Do you think uh, this flipping of uh, projects is that really not really do you think that hurts the uh, project itself i mean even if they do deliver on their roadmap and deliverables and whatnot that's a good question um because i've seen that i've seen this in the in the creeps project that i'm heavily involved in you know that project is one of a kind as far as the speed in which they've released new collections you know not even within the same collections brand new NFT collections that are related, you know, related to their main one with, you know, 5,000 or 10,000 collection that sell out really quick. But then, but even, but since sell out, the floor prices have gone, you know, 60, 70% below mint price, despite these particular NFTs having, I don't know, you know, starting out with staking utility um, and, and utility beyond that. And also new, it seems like something new is added to the game or game theory every week and so it's it's almost like you know are people spooked out by a project with too much utility and 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 are they is it like a sell the news moment where they were able to make their flips and get out and does that spook more people to sort of sell and get out despite 
the project doing very, very well and meeting all those deadlines. So that was a very intriguing example for me of like a project that goes down in value, but <laughs> delivers more and more and more utility. It's almost like an inverse um, proportional relationship. And so, you know, looking at the space altogether, you know, as far as people getting in and, and being there for a short time, does that hurt the project and, and hurt the progress of the project? I don't think it does too much because other projects, you know, you could you could still flip a project without the project announcing or giving any new utility. It could just be momentum, you know, people seeing on Twitter, people buying it or people liking the art. So I don't think that the um, flipping, you know, hurts because a lot of people measure the project's overall success based on the floor price. So the only way for people to increase the floor price and accrue sales volume is for the for people to have flip. You know, we could all we could have all diamond hit our apes at 0.08 ETH, and if nobody ever sold an ape, you know, the floor price could be infinity, but they're not making any volume. The team didn't make any money. So does that mean just because we're all diamond hands, does that make the project the best project ever? Does are they going to deliver on their roadmap if they got no money in secondary sales? So I just always have to look at everything, you know, the logical and financial perspective. You can't, it's almost like a chicken and egg game. You can't have the floor price go up unless you have people willing to paper hand their NFTs, you know, or flip them. And you can't have um, a team to deliver on their roadmap if you don't have secondary sales volume. So I think it all plays, you know, it's, it's still probably answers to be to be found out there, but I don't think it's just, you know, flipping equals bad news for the project and that goes to that goes to also um we don't talk about this much but that also goes to you know one of one artists and people who don't do generative projects you know they could always sell their projects one time to somebody and you know maybe it's a bad look if they flip it but then the artist won't be making any money as well if 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 all of their owners diamond hand the project and what we we all say is a good thing about nfts is that secondary sales um are there which you don't really get with physical art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, also, like if you've seen historically, if you see art, uh, it's only valued because there is a high secondary sale or there is an auction, right? Like, so the real value of art uh, comes <laughs> when it's sold. Otherwise, like, you know, people don't really value it. Uh, like, it's a good marketing for people as well. Ma Mariano, do you have any question? Uh, I know you've been here for a long time. Uh, if you want to ask a question, this is your time. If no, oh, yeah, okay, he dropped. Okay. Ashu, do you want to ask your question? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Iraj, and thanks, Frankly, uh, for, for being here. So my question was, uh, you do flipping on a very regular basis and on, on very frequently. So it, and considering the facts, like it involves uh, platform fees and, and, taxes and and, uh, and and even gas fees. So uh, how do you keep track of all of this stuff? Because the, the frequency is high and are there any tools that you use? Do you use Excel much? Like a lot of people in the, in the space right now would want to know your process and your tools and the best practices, uh, eager to know. Yeah. So for the 2020 tax year, I filed in 2021. I didn't do NFTs in 2020, um, but I didn't do crypto. And so I was able to meticulously track all of my trades and I um, used this website called coin tracking.info. Um, I don't know if that's the best website for NFTs. I still have, I guess, a month to figure this out. So um, there's probably other websites that connect to, you can connect with your MetaMask or, or not, not, not actually connect to, but just, you know, that can read your wallet's blockchain activity. Um, and if you, if you have multiple wallets, you can put in multiple wallets or you can use your Coinbase, um, you know, key and they could, um, Read your Coinbase if you if you if you trust them that much, they can import your crypto trades, and um, then they'll be able to calculate. Okay, here's what the you know dollar value of the NFT is when you bought it, which would require you to have to sell your crypto coin to dollars, then buy the NFT with dollars. Then if you were to sell it, um, you'd have to sell your NFT to dollars and then buy back crypto of dollars. So it's almost like instead of two transactions buy and sell, it's really here in our country, it's for transactions because it's all based in dollar amount so um that that website does a good job of tracking it i just would have to go through all of my nft you know buys and sales to make sure they they track it all i and this is this is obviously my 
political, personal opinion, nothing to do with the law. But um, for regulators, it, like I said earlier, if they have the ability to track what we're doing on our blockchain, then they should be able to allow us to use that same software so that we can come out with the same amount of you know money, or income that they think we're making. Um, the only other alternative for me that will be much quicker is just me just figure out, okay, how much money did I onboard into crypto from fiat through the bank? How much money did, how much money left my bank account to go to Coinbase? And how much money left my Coinbase to go back to my bank account? Because that's pretty much the only way I was able to get money in and out of crypto. And those are, you know, I'm doxed from my bank, KYC on crypto. Um, so at least I should, you know, I should be responsible for that much money, you know, coming and coming out. And at, at least I know that would be how much money I made in income that I know I should be responsible for and pay taxes for. But, you know, obviously, you know, people want the finite, minute details. So you do have to go look at all your uh, MetaMask transactions. So hopefully there are some good websites out there to do it for you. If not, then, yeah, it takes a lot of work to, to join all that stuff. And it seems like, um, you know, we can't avoid that. Awesome. Thank you for your answer. Uh, guys, just a quick reminder, don't chill your projects. Uh, when if uh, Just directly get to the question. Uh, I, Bam, do you want to go next? Yeah, sounds good. Um, thanks again for, for doing this. Really appreciate, you know, sharing all this information. Um, I definitely wanted to ask a more specific question for um, your recent trade on the Dower Darcells. I'm interested, last night I was watching it and I noticed like someone bought like five or 10 of them and that got me interested and I was wondering, you know, maybe maybe I should get this. What was it that made you end up, you know, jumping into these and, you know, thinking that it would be a good trade and kind of how could that be kind of generalized to other projects? That's a good question. I, I definitely do not, I definitely do not successfully hit the best project every week, especially in this bear market. There is no way I could do that um, all the time. So it felt good buying into that project that, you know, between 0.1 and 0.2 ETH and then having other influencers hype it up. I didn't ever even had a tweet about it. Um, so that it's always a good feeling when you buy something and you see somebody else pumping your bags. That's, that's, that was, that's another part of why I value Twitter so much. But I saw this tweet by one of my uh, favorite artists, Sarah Stargirl. I'll, I'll pin it to the um to the space not trying to shield dower dar cells of course but um shortly after they sold out they revealed i i think i had bought one pre-reveal because you know it popped up my ic tools and it was probably like 0.13 floor so it's above mint price and um for vocals on the space i saw that when they revealed now i don't really enter in those spaces but i you can check ic tools and you look at the price history you can see it just diverged so the floor price went straight down for the you know for a lot of the the common dowers to below mint price and then then it, of course it goes back up so i tried to buy in on that dip and what i liked about the art um it just you know that that those two circles or three circles or many circles in there reminded me of the target logo um, except it was, you know, black and not red, but that's a familiar looking logo that, you know, it's easy to spot out, you know, in a crowd of profile pictures. So I thought that was pretty nice. And, um, you know, just thought it was, you know, it had, it looked like it had a lot of effort put into the art. And then once I saw this tweet that I pinned to the page, it doesn't have any likes. Like I said, I, I follow a lot of people, so I get out from anywhere. I saw the tweet and then, um, if you zoom in on the picture, you can see the brand being used like all over different companies and different um, publications since the year 2008. So that made me very bullish because it was not somebody that came in who just created a Twitter account in 2022 who, who has, who is anonymous, who makes a cash grab 0.5 ETH mint. You know, this is 0.1. This is very cheap. Well, it's relatively cheap. And um, all of those indicators made me think, okay, people are going to want to buy into an actual, you know, historically, you know, su historically successful artist who made the jump to go to NFTs. I always think that's a good, that's a good investment to get into early on because 
you know, you, how can you like, there's no way to like FUD an artist who's been around for that long. You can't really say, you, you know, there's, they don't really have any ill intentions to the space. So, you know, that's, that's very low bar to clear or low bar to clear, but it definitely brings a lot of value. So I've, I um, got my Gary V book game stimulus money and, and did some sweeping like I never swept before. And it was just um, pretty addicting to try to become one of the largest holders at the time. And the floor price was at a good price point. Like I, like I mentioned, I went through a list of, of projects that were between 0.1 and 0.2 ETH. And if you had asked me this on like Monday morning or, 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 or Sunday, um, that or Dar would have been on that list. If we had went through it, I would have showed you, hey, you should buy into this one. If it goes to zero, the most amount of money you could lose is point like, you know, one five ETH or so. So um, it was one of those plays where, okay, I'm finally early into something that I think is going to be popular. Now, did I think, you know, did I predict thousands and thousands of sales? I did not. <laughs> so that's why I sold too early. But um, as you can see now, the floor price is nine times the net price. It only took one week for that to happen. And there's been projects that have done better than them for a shorter period of time. But, you know, I just really had liked the artwork and saw the history behind it and, and felt that it was um, – more recognizable than I thought it would be. You know, usually when you see new projects, it's, it's art that you've seen, that anybody's seen for the first time. Um, so you just, you know, but if you if you see art that's been around, that you realize has been around for years, maybe it has a more broader audience, more, you know, more worldwide audience and that allows more people to buy in. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bam, for the question. Thank you, Franklin. It's Bermuda. Bermuda, uh, would you like to ask your question? Oh, and man. Franklin, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. hope uh, uh, like you're okay with answering these questions. I, I know like we overextended by a little bit, uh, but I hope that's okay with you. No worries. Um, yeah, we don't have to go too, too, too long, but I'm fine now. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, let's do it quickly. Bermuda, yeah, let's yeah. What up, dog? Um, Franklin, man, I was I was actually chilling with you on the yacht, took a couple pictures, hung out with you back in the day, and uh, that was my first ever crypto event, man. I got into I got into apes like late August, and so to see where you're at um, from then, I think you had like 20 apes, 30 apes back then. So to see you continuously flip up is awesome. Um, my question to you, brother, is that like for me, I, I sometimes get burnt out in the space and I've noticed it recently I've gone on vacation and like that that time away was like so helpful. But when I came back, like the whole world flipped upside down. So much has, you know, happened. How do you, you know, and I worked a, a full time job just like you and it's crazy, man. We're, we're, we're real lucky where, you know, our NFT flipping is, is I'm, I'm assuming for you as well as me is like outpacing our salary multiple times over. Um, but in, in this space with all this stuff going on and, 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 and all these projects, one of the things that I've noticed is every time a project is about to release, um, like when, 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 when BAYC released the apes or when cool cats released, uh, the eggs or whatever it was like every time there's going to be a catalyst event like that where a project is going to drop, you know, a, a derivative version of it, the, the floor price will spike. Um, and then a lot of times it will crash back down uh, after the fact. And so, you know, sometimes selling into that hype uh, pre-reveal or pre, like pre-airdrop, it seems more profitable than receiving the airdrop. How do you, how do you kind of navigate that? Um, and like, what's, what sort of your method? And I know the answer is going to be different depending on the project, but I'm sure that you feel like what I feel like you can kind of notice things like your, your emotions sort of change like as the hype leads up to a project do do you kind of hold and just like diamond handed or do you feel like because you buy so many you kind of sell half like what what sort of your method uh with that yeah that's a great question um so at least the real world examples that i went through um the board they've said hey we're releasing a surprise in a week and we're like oh my gosh what's surprise what's going on what, you know what's going on here we had no idea they had teased us for a whole week you know, this is back, you know, nowadays it's been months since they've, you know, teased us with a point and we're still, we're still on our on edge every day. But so imagine if they gave us a week notice back then when the, when the community was crazy and it was a lot smaller. So it's well, the ratio of apes to the rest of the community was really high. Um, so then all of a sudden they're like introducing the board eight kennel club and this, this and that. And so we all just like freaked out. We're like, Oh gosh, we're getting free airdrops. So we, 
we didn't know for that entire week buildup um, before they announced the dogs that our NFTs were going to be like that we were getting actual valued NFTs that was worth something in addition to our apes. So in that situation, when it's a surprise airdrop, it's pretty much impossible for that floor price of the airdrop to be baked into the floor price of the ape pre pre drop because the floor price of the ape was probably about two ETH at the time. So, um, and you had to have the ape in your wallet to claim the dog. So if somebody had an unclaimed dog in their wallet, uh, um, then you could buy the ape from them on the floor if they forgot to, if they hadn't claimed it yet or they didn't delist it. So if you buy the ape at a cheaper price, then you get the free NFT. It's almost like an extra bonus. So there was a lot of like market moving where people had to search, eventually had to search throughout the entire listing in OpenSea to see if the ape had claimed the dog or not, if you know if somebody hadn't checked their listings. Um, so eventually, of course, the floor price for an ape with an unclaimed dog would even out to be the same as the floor price of a claimed ape plus the floor price of a dog. And, all, and at this time, all the dogs are the same price because they were um, unrevealed. So it you, you do get the chance to, like, for surprise airdrops to get that um, that alpha to get the quick flip. Like if when the apes drop the dogs, you just buy the floor ape and you get a free dog. And so I think that happened with the gutter, the gutter juices. And I'm, I was so late to that because um, you could buy the juices with a one in four chance of getting a cat, which the floor price went up. But if if you saw that the juices revealed to this particular species, and as soon as they revealed, um, there would be people with cats listed at the floor price. So, of course, you know, the, the ideal strategy was to go find the people who hadn't delisted yet and go buy them and make the money from that as a quick flip. So those are two examples of um, sort of additional airdrops or companions from a NFT group that you can take advantage of that has no effect on the floor price until maybe an hour or two later once people start delisting and listing and buying and flipping, things like that. So those are, I guess those are good for your, if you're investing. Um, and it doesn't affect affect the floor price of the particular um asset as much because it was a surprise so it's you know not it wouldn't just cause people to exit the project so for the other example that i had was um the uh mutants so board ape board apes went from like 20 to 60 ETH in like a week or maybe two weeks it was it was crazy because we all felt mutants were coming and they announced they were coming so it was a crazy week that that happened um I was under an impression that you buy the ape, you, you we had no idea how the mutants want to work. So I felt like if you bought the ape, maybe you can make multiple mutants, you know, as many mutants as possible. So I thought that it was very bullish to have an ape, no, at, no matter what the price was. So I wasn't, I wasn't in the selling mood at the time. Um, obviously, we then realized that you just get one, you just get one mutant per ape. So the market quickly corrected to have to add the floor price of an ape plus the floor price of a serum equals um, the previous floor price of the ape. And so, um, you know, obviously nowadays, it, you know, you've had, if you kept your serum and kept your ape, you'd be still worth a lot more. But um, it took a long time for that market to recover. So that was an example that showed me that you probably do need to sell, sell into the hype because we don't know what the initial floor prices or so of those companion drops will be. Um, and we don't know if they're going to be revealed or pre-revealed. So the ideal situation is just to, um, you know, get rid of, you know, if you're not emotionally attached to it, if it's not your personal brand, then go ahead and assume that the price of the airdrop is already baked in to the floor price if it's already going to, if it's, you know, announced days in advance. Because otherwise the market's going to correct to that. It's just, you know, human nature. If you buy, if you buy NFT at X ETH, and you get an air job that's worth Y ETH, um, or if the floor price goes up Y ETH, then the new floor price is X plus Y. If you get an um, NFT that's worth Z ETH as an air job, then, you, then that's going to just subtract from the floor price later on. So, um, you know, you just don't know what, you just don't know how far it's going to fall or how, how much your air job is worth. But I, I think that there's enough evidence there that we know it's going to eventually drop down. And the same thing happened with Cool Cats. I, I didn't I haven't owned a Cool Cat in a while, so I wasn't involved in the drop. But I noticed that the floor price went up during the announcement for 
the cool pets. And then as soon as they minted, it went back down like two or three ETH because then the price of the um, eggs was detached from the price of the cat instead of baked in. So it, it didn't, I don't think it would have mattered what the floor price of the cat was. You just, you know, eventually after a day or so, you found out what the floor price of the eggs were. And now you, you, know, you knew that the floor price of the cats were going to go down. Um, with the NFT worlds, they just introduced staking. So you can get, I guess you can get some passive tokens from staking your world. So um, I sold my world the day before staking was announced at 9 ETH. The staking was announced and the floor price on the 12.5. I was so mad. I was like, all I do is just like wait, wait, you know, a day and I would have made my money. But now the floor price is already back down to like, under 10 and so i think what happened was people bought into that staking news or i guess sold you know the the people on the correct side sold because um the price of those you know the the rewards that you get from staking was probably baked in to the floor price and once people did the math they could figure out okay well maybe it's not worth paying this much money or holding on to it to get this particular amount of passive tokens so when ApeCoin comes out, I think there's going to be a lot of um, similar math being done. People are going to figure out, okay, if you know if the rumors are true and that a mutant or an ape or a dog gets a particular amount of token, they're just going to do the math and say, okay, at this floor price, you get this much tokens. That's how much percent that you're getting back. At this floor price of, of the mutants, you'll get this much tokens. And this floor price of the dogs, you get this much tokens. And then the market will ratio itself out. Um, so if you're on the right side, then sell it before the price dips. If you're on the wrong side, then buy into it so you can um, you can get into that you can buy into that gap. Awesome. Thank you so much, bro. That was that was spot on and uh, really really well said. And you hit you hit. I'm glad you hit a lot of other projects because you, you hit it from different angles with examples of staking and minting. Thank you, bro. Good good to hear from you, man. Thanks. No problem. Thanks. Uh, Abadi, a uh, quick question. Uh, if you want to take go for it uh, yes hello can you hear me yep okay first of all i want to say um thank you mr d and thank you mr franklin for this um it's it's just amazing um i'm new to this space nft space and i'm just learning new things every day okay my question is about um real estate in the NFT space. Uh, I don't want to mention any names. I'm, I'm not trying to shill any project uh, or any projects, but uh, let's say, for example, there's um, a project with amazing ecosystem. Uh, they have their own uh, token, solid team, solid plans, and their project is focused on real estate. Um, I just want to hear your, your opinion about uh, real estate in NFT space. What do you think about it? Yep, uh, that's a great question. Franklin, can I add uh, something uh, before uh, you want to continue? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. so see, my issue with uh, the entire oh, physical digital space is uh, the thing is, you you know you there is a price action already done with physical assets right like so if you go to a particular area in the world and you find out you like hey if i want to buy land it is worth this much because the price discovery has happened so if you're just converting that into an nft the scope of growth uh of that nft or even a token is very limited because the conditions for a physical property to grow is development there but when it comes to digital assets um the hype cycle is unlimited right like we don't know how much the a board ape can go for a punk can go for but i really know what the limit of uh, uh, real estate could be depending on its location so this is my issue when it comes to like and if you put it on the blockchain that doesn't mean the value of it is going to go even further so even if it's a token then uh, it's probably a premium like 1x or a 2x premium on the real estate price right like so if you were to make money in the short run it becomes really difficult this is my opinion i would like to hear what franklin has to say as well so um just in summary like you the fact that it's digital 
you know, is is easier since it's so easy and 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 I guess it's a lot well, easier again, easier to move around. That means it's probably and it's easier to pay a lot of money for it because you know I guess it's you know just it's just for use cases you don't have to worry about physically being in a certain location or having to deal with you know logistics. So yeah, that probably makes sense as far as why people pay tens of thousands of dollars for like a cartoon picture versus you know back in you know pre NFTs ten thousand dollars would have been saved for some definitely something else some other asset even you know just a physical art that probably looks a lot better so and I, I think I think community plays a role too and also it being cryptocurrency a lot of people um, are early investors in cryptocurrency so they bought ETH when ETH was you know under a hundred dollars so it's a lot cheaper cost basis for them to buy some of these expensive NFTs and not really worry about um, losing a lot of, losing a lot of their bankroll because they already have so much built up. So I think all that plays a role into like why digital seems to be really catching on and really, you know, getting more, you know, sometimes getting very expensive. It just, you know, if, 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 for example, none of us own cryptocurrency until now, then I think we'd see a lot more hesitancy and like, you know, the dollar value of these items, but, um, because everybody would have started out from the same point. But I think as crypto would have grown from here, because I still am bullish about the ecosystem, you know, we'll just, you know, we'd, we'd be the early investors. And, and then eventually, you know, large purchases, large purchases later on would be like small for us because we got in early. So I, I just think it's still like a system that does benefit people who are, who are there early. Um, as far as to why a lot of these things can get really expensive, but then, um, but then you also have to introduce that these NFTs and digital assets are a lot easier to move around and easier to use than the physical. So um, I, I, I just think that um, in terms of real estate, that we're going to have a merging together between digital and physical. So instead of a real estate deed, you just have a deed on the blockchain. So you don't have to go, you don't have to wait for something to come in the mail. It's something that's going to be stored, you know, hopefully on a safe enough blockchain that's, you know, that's not really, you know, you, you you won't it won't be able to be hacked by like a you know bad actor or something. Obviously, obviously, security is a big deal, and so anytime you see somebody getting hacked, it kind of <laughs> sets us back a little bit. So, um, I really think that eventually, um, especially in this digital world, people will start buying and selling real estate through NFTs and digital. So you can you know if you want to own a property in South Africa right now. If there's NFT to buy it, you can just buy the NFT and boom, that house is yours. So I feel like we're, we're going to get to that stage um, eventually. And you just get, you just got to make sure all the documentation stuff that's on the chain is legit and not, you know, can't be lost or hacked or, or um, you know, confused by different governments. Mm-hmm. That, that's, uh, that's good perspective. Uh, thank you, Franklin. Mariano, I hope uh, I'm not, I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, you have- yeah, what's up, D? What's up? What's up? What's Go- up, Frank? How are you guys doing? Hello, hello. Yo, Frank. Um, sorry, guys. I was there before, but then someone called me and I started rugging, so I had to go off and on, off and on. Um, I'm sorry to, you know, like you, Frank, are you're talking a lot, bro. Um, but I'm always curious to hear your point every time you talk. I'm very, very interested because you, for sure, have very good experience on what you say. And um, I was thinking, like, um. You know, as you said before, uh, since uh, what I heard, um, it's always very interesting, like, especially if you're giving suggestions now on investors, you know, in the investor side, like, uh, um, it's always hard to understand when it is, and of course, you don't have the secret recipe, but just, uh, you know, to let us get your point on how you do this. Uh, like, let's say when you get into Ape, no? Or let's say I want to get into Dead Fellas or Cool Cats, whatever it is now that I want to get into. Like, how do you recognize it as a good entry point? Because most of this project, as I think, even when you get into Ape, I don't think you you minted it, right? So, like when you get into a project like this, that it's already a good point. Like let's say it's a two ETH, or like let I'm just I don't know why I'm just thinking about Dead Fellas now, uh, two ETH, let's say, or Cool Cats, whatever the floor price now right now under ten. Like, how do you 
how do you establish, how do you think if that is a good entry point um, or not? Because all those projects are pretty high, you know what I mean? So it's like, of course, as you say, if people made money with cryptos and blah, blah, they give less value to the money. So they're more tend to spend more. But, you know, like it's that's the hardest part. Like if you have to give one of all the suggestions you have, like what would you say to like an everyday guy that said like, uh, you know, like it's an expensive project. Why would you start getting in now? You know, otherwise the, the, the normal conception for everyone is like, okay, I'm just going to mint projects. If I can't mint, I'm never going to buy because they're expensive. So I don't know if, I don't know how to recognize if this can go up. That, that's a good question. Um, oh, go ahead. No, no, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Frank. That's a good question. I think it involves, you know, people on all sides of market participation. So there's people who want to buy and want to flex the most, you know, rarest one of one of the collection so they'll pay whatever it costs to, to be it or they might find a piece of art they really they really identify with and they know that they know they'll never sell so it may not even matter to them what the price is as long as it's a reasonable price so they might not buy the floor price and there's also people like me who just care about the floor price and see that's the only indicator of how well the project yeah. is doing so um if you're looking you know if i was giving advice to like people who were looking at the quote unquote blue chips, which are the projects with a very, very high floor price. Um, which like, we have okay. to be honest, like, sorry to interrupt you. The other day I was yeah. talking with a friend of mine that had three crypto punks and he was about to sell one and he sold one and the floor price was 70. I don't, I don't remember how much it was, but he, mm -hmm. he found it hard to sell it at the floor price. So sometimes the floor price, especially for so high projects, is not really the floor price. I mean, we need, we, we have to keep that in mind as well, right? I mean, sometimes he wasn't able to sell the crypto at the floor price. He had to sell it low. Yeah, and I mean that's we didn't talk about that, but it's getting into a new project, um, you know, in addition to just me just buying stuff that are flying, if you want to buy something on a slower market, you hopefully you can get in through a private sale, or um, or hopefully you know wait for a dip or put a lowball bid in, and that's a good way to get into these blue chip projects. But as far as like a good entry point, given the market conditions. Um, I, I would say look to see if the price, if the um, NFT floor has been at that value in the past. And that's a good indicator of whether you should buy in and how recently in the past was it. So like Cool Cats, for example, they've been between seven and nine ETH a bunch of times and higher than higher than that value a bunch of times. So the fact that they're back down, you know, to seven or eight ETH um, means that and, and they've gone up multiple times means that there's a good chance of it happening again. It's not, I don't, I, you know, it's not like this is the absolute peak of their market. So makes sense. A, makes sense. A, a good entry point, you know, at half of their all time high should be decent, you know, for good, for a good, you know, if you want to make a quick flip, like a five or 10% return in a few weeks for a blue chip project. And there's obviously other projects that, like I mentioned, Dara Dara sells that go up seven, eight, nine X in a week, obviously, you know, so you just have to, you have to, you know, there's a lot of things I guess people look into when they buy blue chips. Sometimes some people buy them just to collect and they don't put on the flip, but they want to use it as their brand. So they don't really care about the floor price. But if that's all you, you know, that's all that matters to you as far as the cheapest way of buying it so you could sell it to make money from, then an indicator is if the if the project has been in that floor price before. The same thing with apes, like the apes have been at this floor price um, around the beginning of 2022. And they were also at this floor price right at the peak of the market in late August when mutants came out. Um, so we've seen people buy apes and sell apes at this price before. So it's nothing, you know, it's nothing to be uh, shocked about anymore that they're so expensive, but there's also a good, in, in you know, a good, the market's also in a situation where it could go back up at any sort of major announcement, especially when our last, one of our last subjects we talked about the um, pricing and the value of an airdrop. So if they were doing another airdrop or doing some sort of passive token that could be priced in before um, it gets released. And then once it gets released, of course the market will detach. So you have to be be careful, make sure if you want to flip it, you get out before um, people, the market starts separating the two values together. And so the floor price of the ape will go down as long as the amount of money that you're making from it stays the same. Um, you know, they'll just, it just may be based on whatever the floor price is when it gets released. And, and then maybe like a week or so later, the two different prices um, separately. So, you you know, that is part of the research that you have to do for these blue chips because, you know, if you didn't do any research and you bought in 
and they had already announced like a companion drop or something and all of a sudden it gets airdropped then of course the floor prices want to go down and you bought it at the wrong time but you know, a lot of these projects they're not you know they're not doing companion drops or airdrops every month so you there's plenty of time to watch the floor kind of chop around for a little bit to know that it's a good place to get in um and there's definitely more and more projects that seem to be having like a four or five, even higher, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight floor, um, which I think is good for the space too. It used to be only crypto punks that had that floor. And then it was maybe punks and apes that, you know, punks had like a set 40, 50 floor, and apes may have had like a 20, 15, 20 floor or even lower. And that was it. But now we have, you know, that probably a half dozen or a dozen projects that have a price point. And so you can at least look at the, market activity of all those projects and figure out, you know, which one is a good one, you know, still relatively cheap, um, for, for your budget, but also, but the, but the uh, new ones, sorry, to throw out the, the new ones, they don't have the track record you're talking about, right? Because like, let's say just, I don't know if I can say names on this podcast, but like a uh, Azuki or invisible, whatever, like those ones, yeah. they don't have a long track record to see if this is actually deep to buy because they just came out last month. So yeah. you like, yeah, you're right. I, I agree. Um, I would say be be cautious if that was the first time that the floor price has been that value, but those projects have seen floor prices of that value for a while or even multiple times. So that is a good chance to sort of buy in. At least you, it's a lot less riskier than buying it in at the peak FOMO part of the market. So it's it's always good to buy in after the FOMO um, when you don't have any FOMO at all. Because I think, I think at least to me, um, it makes me more of a confident buyer. It makes me more willing to pump my bags if I were to do that. If you just buy it in at the, not the bottom of the market, but just somewhere where we've seen those prices and, and now have gotten adjusted to them. That's a great answer, Franklin. And that's a very good question, Mariano. I think we missed it because a lot of question, people might be wondering, right? Like what's a good price to enter? Uh, we're not taking any more speakers, guys, because... Uh, time and uh, we don't want to overburden franklin uh crypto dhanda please ask uh, your question and then we can end with chetan hey thanks Viraj. Uh, uh, hey franklin i think uh, we have crossed each other's path and uh, on the uh, creeps uh, project and, and i, I uh, really uh, echo your sentiment where i've seen the prices of my investment go from 100, 150 ETH during the peak time to now 25 ETH. Now, my question is on two fronts. So one is, uh, it's interesting that you bring about this flipping strategy. And what I've seen in the recent past is, I mean, there are a lot of people trying to do this flipping uh, on the way of uh, minting and then uh, on the day of reveal, uh, uh, flipping it up. So my, my first question is, if, if 90% of the people who are minting want to uh, cash out an X amount or 2X or 3X or whatever it is, it's not going to end very, very good. I think, I mean, if, if all of them want the same thing. And the second corollary question to this is, uh, this, this strategy is really good if, if you're able to mint. And, and with the way the projects are coming up, the mint itself becomes very difficult to get into because unless you get a whitelist, you have to grind your way to it. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's almost impossible in some of the projects to even get into the Discord, like your Loveless, uh, Loveless uh, Discord. Mm -hmm. so, so in that scenario, what would a newcomer do? I mean, if he's not minting, he's not able to mint. And then he he jumps in at the wrong time when everyone is trying to flip, and then he'll end up with a bag of uh, maybe not so good good projects to go around. So 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 your thoughts on that would be really really insightful. I didn't hear your first question too well about. Um, can you repeat that? Uh, the first question was on mint. I mean, we what we have seen nowadays is people minting and then trying to flip immediately after mint. So when 90% of the people are following this strategy, I don't think it'll end very good. I mean, we have seen projects falling dramatically after mint because everyone is in a rush to sell immediately after mint. So, so oh, after, your thoughts so after on that? Or after, yeah. after the mint or after the reveal of the... After the reveal, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Just after, after the reveal. Yeah. 
I think we've seen enough evidence that you know it's just human nature. Um, I forgot the analogy I used, <laughs> but you know, there's there's something to be said about buying an unrevealed NFT, and we and I did mention this with you know, I guess you know, mutant. You know, or I didn't mention this, but like with the gutter cat juices, which are still unrevealed, and um, mutant serums, which are unrevealed, but we kind of know what they would look like. Um, and now, just of any other project coming out comes out now, people, you know, the, of course, the floor price of an unrevealed NFT should be equal for all in a, all of the NFTs in the collection. There's no, you know, unless your number is like sixty nine or something. There's pretty much no other way of buying a one that's more expensive than the other because they're all you have equal chance for all of them so you know i think what happens is once the floor price i mean once the um reveal happens yeah there's a rush to get out if you don't have the if you if you know you don't have a rare version then then people will rush to get out and then eventually there's going to be a, a bottom out of the market and then it comes back up it's never it never seems to go straight down it always seems to come back up to what it used to be before um reveal so that's a good sort of delta where you can buy in at the low and that's what i did with the um dara darcells project i just thought the art was too good for it to be dropping after after um reveal so it just depends on how popular the project is if if um you know there's a lot of projects that don't even sell out and so then the reveal it doesn't really help the project that much you know the full price could even go even lower below met but if there's a lot of a lot of sales happening and you know, there's different tools, different websites to figure that out, then you know we all know it's going to drop. It's pretty it's pretty much, you know, our human psychology. We've seen that pattern thousands of times now. So just wait for the reveal to happen, buy a cheap one off the floor, and then hopefully, you know, maybe you can scoop up a couple more. And um, that sort of answers your second question about um, I guess Discord grinding and whitelist grinding. And um, it's probably hard to be on a whitelist for a very, very, very hype project. But there's two sides to every story. There's projects that get really hyped, but then they have, they have a very high mint price. So regardless of who's on the whitelist, if they don't have the budget to mint, they're not going to mint. The mint slows down. People get nervous who minted early. Like if you mint number 100 out of 10,000, you're, really, you're basically relying on 9,000 other people, 9,900 other people to um, buy that same NFT unrevealed at that high mint price. And so psychology comes around, you get nervous, you start listing below mint, and that's pretty much a death sentence for a project. So all that work you put in to get on the white list of mint, and now um, you're losing money and the project probably won't sell out. And so it's like, it's worth, it makes your work worthless pretty much. Um, so, so there's one downside to, you know, spending a whole bunch of time in Discord. And obviously it's a, it's a definitely not a good position to be in if you did do all that work and still couldn't make the whitelist, but the project is flying so hard that it sells out really fast. So my answer to all that is I just never, I mean, I guess I come from a privileged position, but I don't really do any sort of whitelist competitions because I feel like um, shortly after a whitelist project is minting, you'll have that initial price discovery. So, the first few people will list it really high and then they'll start getting undercut and slowly going down towards the mint price so that if you didn't make the white list, maybe you had to pay um, a premium of like 10% or so above mint, but that's not too, too, too much higher above the mint price. If you're really bullish about the project long term, um, or the alternative is if the floor price is like 15, 20 times or 30, 40 times higher than mint price, like invisible friends, you could just literally just wait until it gets revealed and buy it at a much cheaper discount still with, um, you know, you're not going to 30 X from there, but at least you'll be able to get some sort of profit. And I just use invisible friends. Cause that's a very popular expensive project, but there's, you know, projects in the point 1.2 ETH range that, um, you might've missed out on that when maybe went up to like 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5 pre reveal and you never got it because you didn't make the whitelist, but seeing it drop, you know, 15, 20% after reveal gives you a chance to buy back in and make at least, you know, hopefully five or 10% gains on it in a matter of hours. Um, so that's my, that's how I approach everything. And also, also not being doing the whitelist thing um, is, is less of a risk for me because then when I go on IC tools, 99.9% of the projects on IC tools are either 
going well not okay maybe like 90 percent. 90 percent of the projects i see on those trending lists have already either already sold out or is so popular that it's going to sell out once the whitelist mint ends so i'm that already that already takes away one um one risk away that i'm not buying into a project that's not going to sell out i'm already buying the stuff that's moving that's already sold out i had done no research at all it just pops up on the page is trending. That means other people did the research. Other people had to pay the mint and took that risk. So um, then we go from there. Maybe I, maybe I don't get as much of a flip as they do, but at least I still get a flip. And like I said, it that's a very good point. That's yeah, it doesn't matter if it's like one percent or or a thousand percent. Wow, wow. I, you you know, guys. Like I I I'll just uh, I just want to put it out there. Like I've seen so many Twitter handles. Um, like you know, just saying like, oh, we're in it for the community, we're in it for the art, wag me, this, that, and all that bullshit, and like they sell just like few hours after that or a few days after that, right? Like, and this is what I really like about Franklin. He's like, hey, why not just make few percent out of this? And like you know, he's very clear about it, right? Like, so this is the perspective I think all of us need to hear and also need to see than what. Uh, the NFT space has become about. Um, so, Chetan, I will take your question and that's uh, the end of questions. We are not taking any more requests. Sorry, guys. Um, Chetan, go on. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Dheeraj. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for doing this, uh, Franklin and uh, Dheeraj, both of you. Uh, like, as I uh, guess this is the last question, I just want to keep it very simple. Uh, two questions. First is that, what do you see as the single biggest utility of uh, nfts that are available in the market today and uh, second question is uh, like uh, how do you read uh, nft marketplaces on uh, other blockchains like solana or stacks and are you also flipping nfts there thank you hey good questions um yeah i think someone asked me this a couple of days ago in the space the utility i like the most and if i remember i think i said airdrops and in real life utility. I think just those are, um, I think we're still in an early phase of NFTs where we don't have like the PlayStation 5 video game where you just log into our, or, or, or a Grand Theft Auto type metaverse where you just walk around the city and start, you know, beating people up or robbing stores and getting money or doing jobs, things like that. I don't think we're that, um, that sophisticated yet. So we just got to keep things simple. I mean, we got we were simple with a simple picture of a, a ape that became your um, personal identity or a cool cat. So having these sort of companion airdrops, as long as the art looks great, you saw what happened with um, doodles. You, you, it was like a half airdrop where you either had your doodle or had your doodle with a spaceship. And it's like, you know, something friendly, something cute that keeps keeps um, you drawn and attack and attack attracted to the art so and also could possibly give value which happened with our dogs now the dogs are worth seven ETH. so if you bought an ape for 0.08 ETH, did nothing you could you, know, you just claim your dog you just have extra seven ETH laying around so um those airdrops are very important because it shows that the team is still willing to, to provide you with art and provide you with um, utility and, and additional ways to make money from the nfts without selling your 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 you know og nft and then the other utility I mentioned was real life, um, real life, real life utility. Like just the fact that we had NFT NYC and Ape Fest and the yacht party and the warehouse party was just extremely, extremely bullish to me. Um, seeing all the people lined up around the block to buy the merchandise, seeing all the people lined up around the block to also um, buy or to get their ticket for the parties, seeing people in line to get into the parties that, like, you know, an hour or two hours before the party starts it really showed how um, much of an impact that that th at least this particular project had on the NFT community and real life community. And I think that you know the more pop, the more these um, communities grow, the um, more in demand that people want to 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 go to these you know meetups because they do indicate sort of a status that you know you're able to be in this in this point in this in this party or this event that only a certain amount of people have access to. So when um, Board of Yacht Club builds their in real life club in Miami, I think that's going to you know, blow up really, really big, even just in the local crypto space down there where like, you know, there'll be a lot of business deals, a lot of new network connections happening just on the fact that either you own an ape or know somebody that owns one. And so it's, um, you know, it's, it gives people access to a, another 
exclusive club. And that's why, and that, and that could be just the reason why people buy stuff. I mean, people have car clubs and, and, um, you know, like Augusta national golf club, that's a very, very high, you know, status symbol to be a part of. So it'll be the same with NFT. So I'm just really interested in seeing what NFT projects give the best, um, in terms of airdrops or free gas claim, you know, or free with gas claims of NFTs. And then also real life utility where we can, we can show, you know, and put our faces to how important the project is and hype it up on um, social media or in traditional media. Um, eventually I think we'll get to the video games. We'll get to the metaverse and running around in 3d, but I just, you know, I don't think the technology is there yet. So right now I'm just focusing on, those other two utilities that was a good question um you had another question too right yeah i mean uh like yeah i thank you so much for that answer community uh, access to community and then probably airdops are these uh the two most important utilities the second question was like uh how do you how are you reading like uh, marketplaces nft marketplaces on other blockchains like solana or stacks or uh, even others also and are you also flipping nfts there so yeah i started out with top shot Dapper um, in 2000, or last year in March, and um, I had a, it was a very good experience there. I mean, they obviously they're in their beta phase, so they're you know could could be down at different moments, but um, it was good. You know, I, I figured out how to do shopping and and doing research and using companion websites to to find good deals. I just never could make any money from them, so it wasn't really flipping. It was just you know ease of access to onboard. NFTs through fiat, which I liked in that marketplace. And then there's, of course, OpenSea, which we're all familiar with. So there's no really like, you know, you can't really complain about them. You know, that's what we use. That's how we're making our money. Then, um, uh, and that's basically mostly Ethereum, but there's also Polygon. And then Solana. So I, I dabbled in Solana at the beginning of September. <laughs> and that was, um, that was like almost at the peak of their, or, or, or kind of, okay, I guess right. Right in the beginning of September, Solana started to really outperform Ethereum. So I, that that caught my eye. So I started buying some Solana to get into the marketplace. But, um, you know, and I guess now is a good time to, to buy back into Solana because it, it went down relative to Ethereum to back to where it used to be before September. But from that September period through, you know, last month, it was really, it really outperformed Ethereum, you know, at least at the peak. So I bought a lot of NFTs at the peak of their markets. Like I bought to Gen ape club when the floor price is like 100 soul and soul was like coming up on 130 140 150 so it was a lot of money that i spent over there i bought um solana monkey business at i think it was 91 soul and that that actually took off but i i panic sold because the market just went straight down by like 15 20 percent um and i also bought a thug thug birds there for um i think the floor price hit uh, it was like a hundred and something <laughs> and I bought it at the very peak and it just went down. They just ever since. So I had very bad experiences there. So it was just, you know, it was one of those things where I got to know my lane and stick to it. And Solana, I, I, you know, I didn't have as much exposure and then my Twitter following. So I didn't really get as much alpha on it. And, you know, there's, I didn't find, um, didn't do the research to go into like a IC tools, like website that tracked transactions there to find out, which projects I could get in and which projects I could get out. So it was just one of those, okay, well, I have, you know, this much, you know, go back to being too rich for something, too poor for something. It's like, okay, well, I have this much money in apes. You know, why am I even trying to worry about learning a new blockchain right now when I could just stick to what I've known the best? And, and um, you know, with the Twitter phone that I have that uses mostly Ethereum, you know, let's see what I can do over there. So that's the only other marketplace I've gotten into. Um, I know, uh, Arbitum with Treasure DAO, they have they have some NFT projects there, and then um, the uh, Treasure Trove on the IMX blockchain. I just recently used just for the book game. So token I trove. Bought, yeah, yeah, token trove. I haven't bought a um, book game. I just sold, so I had sixty. Now I'm down to five, but it's pretty easy to use there. You don't have to, you don't have to pay any gas or anything, so I thought that's pretty cool. Um, so there's definitely high upside, especially over there because book games. The vol- like even in our the most bearish of bear markets this past weekend, book games was clearing like thousands of ETH of <laughs> volume. It was it's ridiculous. So and there's definitely you know research to be done and money to be made on these other blockchains. I just um, was was one of the things where I know my lane, and if I'm not 
you know, if I was brand new to Ethereum and I bought NFTs at the top, like I did with Solana, I probably would have quit too, just to be honest. So <laughs> that's just how I am. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. Kitten, uh, they were amazing questions. And uh, guys, uh, uh, like we are at the end of the space. I just want to thank everyone. There are 121 people listening. Uh, and a lot of you have been here since we started. I really appreciate all of you coming here, spending your precious hours listening to us talk about NFTs and flipping and crypto and Franklin's journey. I just want to give a huge shout out to like you know people who have been following me, people who have been following Franklin, NFT, India, Telegram. These guys have been always supportive. All the people whom I can see, Justin, Ashira, Rohit, Swan, Elder the Ape, uh, Shirley, all, all you guys, thank you for being here uh, and like, you know, always supporting us. Uh, for, uh, secondly, I would like to thank Ashutosh for helping me set up this space and just being amazing. Uh, Franklin, thank you for taking your time out. I think we had just uh, scheduled the space for an hour, but like we've gone way over that so like thank you for being so cool and answering all these questions um so patiently and so with a calm head i really love i really respect the perspective you have on things so i was really excited to get you on um this was very much unlike other spaces we listen to because people are just hyping the projects over and over saying like you know wag me this project to the moon lambo all that jazz you're not like that you're like very calculated very uh this kind of opinion also needs to be respected uh when it comes to things and guys if you enjoyed this space uh please let us know when we end uh like tag me tag franklin follow me uh i do these i'm dheeraj i do these spaces almost every day uh we do three to four english spaces every week and we do extremely beginner to crypto web three spaces in hindi as well for our indian audience uh but uh, this is what we are looking at. We are looking to spread Web3 education, uh, bring on people and talk about the topics which people really need to hear and people really ask these questions all the time. So thank you uh, for like just listening. And Franklin, any closing words? Uh, again, just want to thank you for being here. No, thank you for having me on. Um, yeah, just... I'm around and, and try to be as avail available as I can. I do get a bunch. I've gotten a bunch of DMs lately and been very, very slow to respond. But I, I, every once in a while, I'll try to read through them and get through as many as I can or just, you know, tweeting at me and um, replies if you have any questions about what we talked about or um, just any questions about what, what I'm doing. Feel free to, you know, ask, you ask tough questions. It's okay. I'm a grown adult. I can handle them. Um, yeah, and I and I'll continue to try to do as, as many spaces as I can. You know, um, I try to make myself available during business hours, not really on spaces a lot in the evening or on the weekends. But you know, it's good good to kind of just take a couple hours out and talk about NFTs. And um, yeah, I don't I don't really host anything regularly, but if I do, I'll just tweet it out, and you guys can join, and we can talk some more. If you have any verbal questions you want to ask, but yeah, other otherwise, I'd. I had a blast talking about this and I sometimes learn from people's questions. You know, they, they, you know, I always try to get alpha as much as I can. So, um, keep, keep up the good work, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Franklin. Thank you guys. Uh, don't forget to follow Franklin, follow me, Ashu. Uh, and, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the space, you learned at least one bit, uh, do thank Franklin and, uh, just reshare uh, this space. Alright guys, uh, take care GM, uh, everyone. Bye.